On today's part of my take, best of 2022, we have everything that happened this past year, best interviews, best moments, all of it uh, in one spot, relive what was a great year in part of my take, and it's brought to you by our friends at Amazon Music. Hey, Prime members, have you heard? Part of my take is now ad-free on Amazon Music. With the Amazon Music app, you get access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts, and it's now included with Prime. To listen, visit Amazon.com slash PMT. Avoid the ads and listen to your favorite Barstool shows on the go, offline, or wherever life takes you. Start listening ad-free by visiting Amazon.com slash PMT. That's Amazon.com slash PMT. Amazon.com slash PMT. You can listen to Amazon ad-free on Amazon Music. It's a great deal, so start listening right now ad-free. Visiting Amazon.com slash PMT. Thank you to Amazon for sponsoring the best of 2022. You could listen to this ad free right now if you uh, download the Amazon Music app. So check it out right now and go to Amazon.com slash PMT and get it going. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, December 28th, and let's get into the best of, shall we, PFT? I'm pumped. We had a very good year, a great year. Some of our best of is actually, ironically, I think, some of our worst stuff. Yep, I always. I was looking at the list of some of the stuff, but that's the magic of this podcast. Sometimes it's so bad that it's great. Yes, so uh, let's dive right in. Best of. 2022 and we will be back live with a new show on friday live from the arizona bowl which you can watch on barstool.tv 4 30 p.m eastern ohio versus wyoming check us out we will be there hey big cat do you have any new year's resolutions yeah i'm not telling you okay that's smart that's smart because then you won't do them yeah no i'm gonna get in shape i'm going to here's a good one here's one that you can use for free i use this every year uh I'm going to start drinking more water. Yeah, no, I did uh, one year I did more apple juice, so I had one cup of apple juice. Yeah, I think I'm going to drink more water. I'm finally going to... The boys are getting hydrated in 2023. Hard bodies. That eight, yeah, hydrated. I like it. It's like going to be a great year. Super Bowl abs, yeah. loading. Yeah, so uh, let's hop in. Best of 2022. He's won one Super Bowl, which we can get into, because I have the theory that if you win one Super Bowl, you actually have none. Uh, he is a four-time MVP of the league. He has an 11 and 10 postseason record, uh, one and four in NFC Championship games. I'm just introducing you. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks ever, Aaron Rodgers. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay. I don't, I don't really know where to start, well, other than like, okay, how dare so, you? So big, how dare you? Big Cat will not ask you any any <laughs> questions that aren't threatening. So I'll start it because we we ask everybody this. Yes, on that's grit true. Week. I forgot about that. I got what, blinded what with does, rage. What does grit mean to you? <laughs> Wait, are you recording this? I know you like to. You don't trust the media. Do you I have don't your trust own you tape guys. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what does grit what does mean grit? to you? Uh, means you're from Pittsburgh. Ooh. Okay. That's actually an answer we haven't had yet. It's a great answer, And though. it's true. That's what's been ingrained in me since I was a second-year player in the league. I've been around, surrounded by Pittsburgh people, everybody from Mike McCarthy to Tom Clements to Ben McAdoo, Dom Capers, Darren Perry, Frank Signetti, a lot of Pittsburgh people. Mike and Dicka. all they talk about is just – Toughness, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that is that true. Pittsburgh grit. Putting fries on sandwiches. Wait, yeah. so are you saying that you miss Mike McCarthy? I love Mike McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. So why didn't why don't you marry him? Listen. Okay. All right. Let's just let's just cut through it. Put our cards on the table. If you had to go to jail or prison, which one would you pick? <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, well, jail is probably a little lighter jail, like than prison. County, county jail. Yeah. I've said. Yeah. I see. Listen. Maybe you a like lot of the people... Manhattan Correctional <laughs> Facility with like a, a real jacked up former cop as your cellmate for a night? Yeah. From what I've read, I think if anybody in this room, and I don't know some of the other people in here, um, and Tom has a sketchy past, but I think you would probably be most likely to go to jail between all of us in here. Really? Yeah. I have committed some crimes, that's fine, but I also admit to the crimes I commit where you don't, and you yeah, kind of skirt around it. But listen, I'm, I'm actually very... <laughs> realistic about you as a player. I've always said you're a very good quarterback, very good quarterback, even league MVP four times, right? 
I do think that you are you should be in jail or prison, and I'm fair to say you get to pick. I think jail's better than prison, so you can have that, and I will meet you halfway. Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, I'll work on it. Let's do it. Let's try a different angle. How close were you to retiring? Be honest. Close. I don't yeah. know how close is close. I was thinking about it. Yeah. So Jeopardy. That would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. Did yeah. you want that job? I did. Ooh. I feel like it's a thankless job, though, because that's become one of those shows where no matter who's hosting it, it's almost like the Jeopardy community loves to like nitpick at the host and be like, you're not Alex Trebek. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the case. And I would say for many of the shows that I grew up watching, that is definitely the case. You know, Price is Right. Nobody can ever be Bob Barker. Best mm -hmm. show ever. But I will say one guy who's transcended all of that and even surpassed Louis Anderson, who nobody thought ever could, is Steve Harvey mm, with Family Feud. He's America's host. Family you're right. Feud. You know what I mean? That show went through so many different people. And I, although they didn't maybe have one iconic host other than Louis, you know, I think uh, I think Steve definitely did that. But. So I was actually like, I, I, you know, like I said, I'm actually fair with you. You might think I'm not fair, but when you were, you know, saying that you want no to offense, be but I don't watch your stuff. What? My what? We don't think about you at all. You're never so, going to retire. You're never going to retire. You. I, wait, I just got one follow up. Like, are you really sensitive about what I said last year after I scored that touchdown? Okay, let's get into it. Um, so you said Is that what I, I, what, I own your, you. Yeah. I fucking own you to the city of Chicago. The city of Chicago has $38.7 billion of debt. So mm. are you going to pay that? That's a good one. I mean, what, no, I'm not if you own it. us. No, I was. I don't think I'm saying that about the entire city. Now, maybe Soldier Field, every fan who was flipping me off. Mm -hmm. You know, that yeah. negativity that was kind of coming my way. It was a pretty substantial FCC fine. <laughs> That came Fox's way. Do you own well, that was fine? It? You can't just say fuck on TV. I don't think it's supposed to be a 10 second delay. So I think that's out of my hands. Yeah, Do well, I, I actually own you because I'm a Packers owner. Fact. Yeah. So I own you, you own him. You own a piece of paper that has yeah, no, zero it's, no, it's legit. actual value. It's legit. I actually stole it from our goldfish. So our goldfish owned you. Then he died. Then I inherited the share. Now I own you. You own Big Cat. So. I kind of, I guess Dan? I, yeah. Dan. I yeah. inherit that debt. Okay. Do you feel bad for what you've done to my friend Big Cat? <laughs> no, I don't. At all, not at like all. not at all, because it, like I don't know if you can tell. I think tell he's this. conflicted. You know, he's conflicted. It's kind of like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Remember, you know, he's like, I can feel the conflict within you, and he says this fake statement like, "Oh, there's no conflict. I'd move on." Inside, he went to Wisconsin. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I hate you, though. I hate the He's Packers. seen some of my all-time best moments on the field, not yeah. only at Soldier Field, but also at uh, Ford Field. Mm -hmm. So I was a Lions fan for 24 hours. But deep and down. And I, I went to go help support the Lions fans to try to beat the Packers, and then you threw the Hail Mary right in my face, directly in my face. Like I said, you've tortured me. They had me on the way over here. They were like, what's the worst moment, Aaron Rodgers versus the Bears? And I just started listing – like a laundry list and it goes on forever do you get extra like do you do you actually relish in the fact that you beat the bears the way you do every single year yes fuck i mean i know i mean i knew the it's answer a, to that because it's a great sports town you know if we're beating up on a t town that doesn't have great sports history it's like just another win but chicago is chicago you get 100 years of bears football almost right you have the chicago bulls i grew up a bulls fan you know, back on my old TV, we had like seven dials, you know, and you had to like hit it just right with the antenna doing. We could get WGN so we could watch, you know, Cubs baseball mm -hmm. and Harry, Harry Carey. Carey. Yeah. You know, that was like iconic and Bulls basketball. So we're like, so I grew up watching yeah. Chicago sports. So, all right, what's your favorite memory? I'm just going to do this because everyone's going to want to hear it. What's your favorite memory of beating the Bears? What's your favorite Bears all time? Because there are a lot. I actually, like, weirdly, I'll tell you mine first because there's, you know, Randall Cobb was terrible. Mm -hmm. The NFC Championship game was terrible. Uh, when you faked you had an injury with Khalil Mack that first half and you came back. Weirdly, though, the one that just kills me the most because actually Hank and Dave, we were in Arizona for uh, some college football thing and we watched Sunday Night Football. It was a game that you put up, like, I think you guys were up 42 nothing at half, and they just laughed at me for an entire half. And they're like, how do you watch this? That one hurts, I think, weirdly the most. So what's your favorite? Go ahead. Well, that one hurts because it was 42-whatever at halftime, and I'd thrown six touchdowns, Yeah. and the record is seven. <laughs> and <laughs> Mike was 
<laughs> and Mike was going to sit me. And I was like, ah, how about one more possession? <laughs> he goes, okay, one more. So we got down to the nine-yard line and threw it three times, three incompletions. So Ben, don't break. Yeah. So we went up 45 nothing. Yeah. All um, right, so what's your favorite? Probably 2013. Okay. Only because I came back from my collarbone. Randall came back from his knee injury. And then somehow it was for the division. You know, after so many things happened, you know, for us to be able to be in it. And I believe that Detroit was still in it the week before. Then they had a bad loss to somebody. So then it came down to, like, our game. And, you know, neither team I don't think was great that year. Mm -hmm. But we're still playing for a home playoff game. And I start off, I throw a pick to Chris Conti um, on a rollout. And I'm like, shit, like, is it going to go like this, you know, tonight? And then I threw another pick to – to Jennings in I think the second or third quarter and then we had that weird fluky pep you know cause a fumble and Mm -hmm. Boykin picks it up and nobody's doing anything and he runs in the end zone and and on the last drive we converted uh three fourth downs you know fourth and like inches on a dive play a fourth and three on a throw to Jordy but the last one was was pretty amazing so what this is this is terrible. I don't. I, I actually hate that I'm doing this. This is actually my least favorite thing I've ever done coming here, uh, right now. But you when look you good. Saw that, you look good. I, I, I want to tell you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean sometimes. No, I mean uh, you know. I know that we've all struggled with our own issues, and I know weight's been kind of up and down for you. But I feel like you look. Well, you, you don't. You really don't watch good. anything I do. No, I just heard. Oh, okay, I, I okay. Heard, you heard yeah, about the weight. All right. Yeah. I'll be honest. I like you. I don't like what you've done to my friend because you probably aged him like 30 well, years. Well, you're a Washington fan, so you don't care. Yeah, but you don't watch anything that we do. <laughs> you're right. I'm a nihilist, okay? Like, I, I'm convincing myself to root for Carson Wentz this year. That's how bad things have got. I'm, an, I'm actually a Commanders fan. Don't forget about that name change. But I do like you. Um, I noticed that you had almost like a significant change in perspective over the last few years, you become, it seems like you're having more fun from what I've seen. You're enjoying your teammates. You're enjoying the process. You're enjoying what you get to do uh, while you're still, still able to do it, which I think is very cool. And you have a good perspective on like where football fits into your life. I think a lot of people don't have that, especially from the outside. So I guess my question is, when did you first try ayahuasca? <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Straight from the source. What source? Ecuador. <laughs> I don't think it's me. I don't think that would be the source. Uh, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. By the yeah. way, the tattoo looks better in person. Thank you. That's I, another thing I admire about you. Yeah. You're you're totally go ahead. You're like, listen, if you want to put a needle in my arm and inject whatever you want in there, I'm totally on board with that. I could never do that. People would say, oh, well, immunization, vaccination. Yeah, I did. I said yeah. that a lot. Yeah, you did. Yep. But, How many people do you think you killed? What's your count? How many grandmothers? See, Let's just do grandmothers. I mean, I know you guys are fucking around. I don't find that that part funny. I really don't. Okay. Like, oh, shit. You got John Cena. No. Nah, um, yeah, yeah. 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 Can I ask you a, a non-condescending, in a non-condescending way, a question? Yeah. I'm going to. That, was that a question was kind of hard. That was that, a rhetorical that, question. That intro question was a little bit condescending. It was rhetorical. <sighs> yeah. Okay. It, it, truly, is it hard for you as a Bears fan, yeah. that some of your greatest moments are cheering against me when the Bears aren't playing? Okay, good question. Um, very good question. No, it's it's actually great because what I've told everyone is um, I'm very realistic about the Bears. Not a great franchise. Just don't do the right things for the most part. Every year I look forward to the playoffs and the game that you're going to lose. And <laughs> I've told this story on the air, but like when you guys lost to San Francisco this year, we were watching the game in New Jersey, and I drove, drove back to Brooklyn, brag, um, and I listened to uh, Tauscher, ESPN Wisconsin. For three hours I sat in my car. At my, I had arrived home. It's a 20-minute drive. I had ride home. I sat for three hours listening to callers be like, blow up Lambo." get 12 out of here, we need to build a dome, this team isn't built for the outside. And it was that was the highlight of my NFL season. And I have no problem <laughs> saying that because I know I'm a loser. That's the best part. I've come to grips with the fact that I'm a loser. So, yes, watching you lose in the playoffs is my – that's my Super Bowl. And I've, I've won a lot of Super Bowls, if you do it that, that way, more than you. <laughs> we are at Ryan Rosillo's house. 
It is Ryan Russell, Mark Titus, PFD, myself, Life Episode 2. Yeah, there's definitely, there's a lot of times where I'm like, you know, especially like on the weekend when I'm, you know, doing a lot of parenting and I'm like, I miss the dude who can just go and get drunk at a bar at like noon. But then yeah. you don't really miss him. But you do. What what is the biggest difference between having the two kids? Not not emotionally, because like I mean, I, your answer is going to be like it. You know, I, yeah. I, I I love more or whatever. Blah blah blah. Who cares? What, that is uh, the truth. The, though. The, That's one of those ones that like if you don't have kids, and I don't, yeah. I'm not shaming anyone, but like when you do have a kid, you're like, yeah. oh fuck, this is completely different than anything. Yeah, else I have ever. A, I have a dog. I get it. Dan. Yeah, right. um, it's so, a love you can't understand. <laughs> What uh what what is the what is the biggest difference day to day life or like the the thing you've had to cut out that you didn't anticipate having to cut out? It's and having kids. It's like there's no there's like very little time where I can just do nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's like no there's doubt. very yeah. there's like maybe mm, it's like Friday night and then like maybe like an hour or two on like a weeknight where I can literally just do absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. That's the part. Like, where you can't, like, I can't just, like, sleep till 11 and be like, I'm going to do nothing on Saturday. Yeah. That's, I'd say that's the biggest time thing. But it's, you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Don't have kids. I actually think yeah. you should, but. Who, me or all of us? Everybody. No, yes, yes. Why'd I get a no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had, I remember the first time I thought I was going to have a kid. I was 21. Ooh. Yeah, I headed back to UVM for my senior year. And this older woman, fitness instructor, no big deal, <laughs> she was like, I'm pregnant. And I was like, this is going to fuck up my senior year so bad. <laughs> yeah, that would. Yeah. That was definitely a time I wasn't yes. ready. And it wasn't yes. going to turn back on anytime soon. And then uh, guess what? Magic of science. Uh, I think she was just fucking with me, seeing how I react. Pretty nasty. <laughs> That's track. actually a funny. It, well, yeah. it wasn't funny for me at the time, but I remember being like, well, fuck, like, <sighs> I guess how am I gonna do this? I gotta go back to like this isn't gonna, this is gonna like can I go out on Thursdays still? <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut off Wednesdays. Right, right. <laughs> like will it be a custody thing? Because I'll definitely like not have fifty fifty. I'm twenty one in school and like we have a dog and there's six of us, so the kid can't probably stay with us that much. So um, anyway, you know, look, uh, didn't happen, and here we are. So all right, so we do have Hank. So mm -hmm. this is going to air right before he has to give the speech, but he's giving his first best man speech ever next weekend at his brother's wedding. So he mm -hmm. asked for some advice, and I think I think we've all done it at yeah. least once, a couple times. So like, what 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 are what is the expectation, Hank? I do think there is like a expectation for me to put on a show. I'm definitely like the outgoing one. Yeah, always got in trouble and stuff. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there will be some expectations similar to you where yeah. you know my family's expecting expecting a show. So well, like, wait a minute. Can I just a show? A show. They're like, a show. You know, they're, 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 show. like they're like oh like, you know, like trick. this this speech is coming, like it's, something's coming. No, I know right. the, that, that, that's, yeah. that's, a, right. that's yeah, no, right. similar spot okay. like, yeah. yeah. The reverse is my brother my brother's very shy, like you know, yeah. a little little more guarded. If it was reverse, I don't think they would because be expecting a, a crazy speech. Yeah. Like no, Hank, you you like like you do you have a job, you have a lifestyle that you're like you're in front of a camera sometimes and talking to microphones and stuff. So I think people go to go to a ton of weddings and you see people get up there that are nervous. So anytime it's a it's a situation where you know someone might not be nervous to publicly speak you're like oh thank god this is not going to be the worst yeah. fucking speech i've yes. ever heard yes so then it kind of sets the expectation high. yes though. people are expecting it yeah, yeah no you're you're absolutely right i so i have a couple high level thoughts that, and you guys can go off of it but i already told hank i think this i think you have to keep it like five minutes or less yeah, i think anyone definitely. who goes longer than that is people don't you mean every woman yeah well <laughs> i didn't say that Ryan, you did yes I did say though well, to Hank, well, I was like, I look, "Make sure I you look, go science, out." Science, the science backs it up. <laughs> well, that's true. What Ryan just said, you got to remember that you're not the star of the show. You got to remember that the stars yeah. of this show are actually the uh, the bride's dad mm -hmm. and then her maid of honor. They're so, going to go super long. Yeah, you're probably going to go on after the maid of honor. Your job is like people at that point. Or looking around like, when it's, can I go back to the bar? Yeah, it's three to five minutes. I, yeah. The biggest thing, though, you can't have notes. Yeah, you I think you, you have, have to notes. speak from. You, I, I think oh, the notes Hank make just you got freaked out. No, but you, on. the guy who goes up with, I've I've seen some really bad ones. Uh, there's think one how friend that's probably they're listening. Not as, they're not as seasoned as you are. I there's think, one friend that's listening right now that's going to know exactly I'm talking about his wedding. But he brought like cue cards, and it was he forgot to mention the bride, which you can't. Oh. You have to mention the bride. Have to. 
But I think no notes is the way to go. I think you have to prepare notes and then don't use them. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But you, you can't, have to. You can't, yes. The worst thing you could possibly do is be the wing it guy. No, you can't be you, the wing it guy. And that is that is an absolute disaster. So but like, it's prepare like prepare the speech, but then don't. If you're up there reading notes, yeah, you over. you lose already because yeah, everyone's like, wait, yeah. you need notes for this? Like yeah. you got to be. Yeah. It's got to be because people will be like, oh wow, you really spoke from the heart. It's like, well, I did practice it, but yeah, yeah. you're right. It's, I think it's a pretty simple formula for the most part. Yeah, Hank. Go ahead. Is there a formula of like, you know, old anecdote from when we were kids? Yes. Things yes. he's taught me. Yeah. Yes. Bride. He's remarks. a better person than me. That's yes. usually a good one That's to be like, one. you know, like I I've always looked up him. to him. Yes. Yeah. And then Had a bride. Weird phase, but, you know, he's out of it. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Don't do the don't That's, don't do the, bri- the the one thing you can screw up and a lot of people do it. Is they do like the bride add on at the end? They're like everything I said about you, like, and it's your your wife too. Like, yeah. you got to have a story about the bride. Yeah, the the way to get around that is you you talk you find the things about your brother that you appreciate about him that you don't have, and then you can say like, this is what I've always looked up to him for. And then at the end, well, then also include one story about a time he got into trouble, and then everybody will laugh at that, and then not too much trouble. Yeah, though. exactly. You have, you have like, to be careful. <laughs> with that yeah, one. you have to edit it a and, little bit. Yeah. You can't be like, oh, I remember that time that he got busted with that hooker in Acapulco. Yes. Yes. No, you got to be like, you remember that time where we, you know, we we were uh, on a road trip together or something like that, and you made the best play. Like, joke around a little bit about stuff, but don't make it too serious. And then at the end, uh, say something about how she's so much better than he is. Yeah. Because that gets a laugh too, where it's like, I always thought that you'd marry well, but I had no idea that you would outkick your coverage by this far. Mm. You know, like something nice. I hate jokes like that. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that, that one's tough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, this is this is how you got to end it. Say that she's better than him a little bit. See, I think you got to. I think you have to add a story about her that doesn't. Like, you can't. The mistake you can make is like you say a whole speech, you do four and a half minutes, and then the last ten seconds you're like, oh, and also it goes for her. You have to have a story about her. What hey, do you say, did, Ryan? Did he ever tell you a story? about meeting her there's, right. there's got to be something in there about that he met her there had to be a moment that he shared with you about how he cared for her or just I mean, make it up that's what i did for my brother i also have a total zag because you said you wanted to give him a show and that your brother's quiet Ooh, i like this it's a dying art ventriloquist yes. <laughs> and you bring one out and you say it's your brother and you talk to him and ask him questions and tell stories. And because he's shy, you don't even have to be good at it because he doesn't want to talk. He's in front of all these people. And that's how you play it off. You give your speech through a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy that you're not even using because your brother's sock, shy. Just sock puppet. I got another one for you, Hank, that could, could bring the house down because your close personal friend, Tom Brady, has some time on his hands. Get him to give him a message. Play that. Mm. I do those for free, by the way. You do? Priscilla will do it for him. Yeah, that's probably going to bum people out. You know, when you're younger, a lot of the stuff that you're going through when you're younger is kind of like your own insecurity. And I always try to remind this to like people. It's like, hey, just remember, like the other person you're talking to and all the insecurities that you have about yourself, pretty good chance they have just as many. So just, you know, go up and talk to the hot girl. Right. You know, there's a moment where she doubts herself and maybe mm-hmm. that's that night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and mm-hmm. who knows? Um, but I, I think it's like a good rule to kind of operate with where you're like, you know, just remember like the stuff that you second guess yourself. You're not the only one doing it. Literally everybody else. And it's even though they're true. trying as hard as they can to project that they're not having any of those things, just like you do, just admit that like, all right, this guy's probably got some weak spots. Let's go. It's, I, it's, it's absolutely so, true. Ryan, you're right. But I also love that you're, the, uh, the statement boils down to like, you can fuck a really hot chick if you try. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't give up on yourself. That's a little aggressive, PFT. Yeah. I meant, you know, relationship. I thought no, we were talking about families. Like, what you're saying it links into what PFT said and what I'm saying about caring. Like, a lot of times you, when you're younger, you're like, I don't care about this or this is lame. It's cool to not you care. Don't, right, yeah, because right, right. you don't want to open yourself up to have someone be like, oh, you like that? Yeah. yeah. And it's, look, yeah. it's the same thing, too, as, you know, where I, where I went to school – you know, it's Vermont, smaller school. For whatever reason, you know, there's a ton of Boston guys, a um, ton of Fairfield County guys, and then we'd always be like, why are you here when you're from Arizona? But all we did was make fun of each other. That's all we did. So, like, the only way you could keep up, not that this is like, oh, wow, that was the college where college guys made fun of each other all the time. But, like, I remember carrying it into our 20s, and I would just be, like, ripping on everybody yeah, all the right, time. Right. And then you're like, wait, you know who's probably not a great time to hang out with? <laughs> yeah, right. A guy who makes fun of everybody for everything. And yeah. it wasn't, 
I don't know if it, what it was. It was just what I was used to. Right. And I remember mm. talking to my buddies, being like, "Hey, do you have like weird moments at work?" And a couple of guys were like, "Oh my god!" Like I had to stop doing that a couple of years ago. Like I almost got fired. And what I'd say is that there are these moments, you know, like when you're in your 20s and you think you have, like this is a bigger thing. Like I'll use the hangover theory on this one. Like when you're hungover, you know, big night with the boys and it goes away like on Tuesday, it fucking goes away. Right. It goes away. It doesn't feel like it's going to go away. And you're like, should I take a foreign language? You know, maybe I finally learn an instrument this year. I'll get back on the dating apps. You know, I need to change things up. And by Tuesday, you're like, what a fucking weirdo I was for 36 hours. <laughs> right. Like, what, what was that? Like, right. What was, did, you, did you write a poem or something, you fucking weirdo? <laughs> yeah. So it goes away. I'd say that you can expand life out that way. Because all of these little moments, all these little things, and I think this is, you know, we're all kind of around the age, and obviously I'm older than you guys, but you start to learn, like, almost none of it ever fucking mattered. None of it. That mm-hmm. all of it kind of goes away. And that's the one thing that I still try to, now that I know that, when I'm dealing with something in the moment, you're like, you know, this is going to mean almost nothing. Like right. this is going to be completely insignificant. And even though you're consumed by it today, you know that later on, this will have meant fucking dick. Yep. And it's hard to learn that until you go through it enough. But I would just keep hammering it over and over again. Like as you're aging and as you're getting a bit older, it's a great feeling when you start to be like, hey, I don't want to be an asshole to everybody, but I also am like not going to worry about this stuff as much because it's not as significant on the path of, of the bigger stuff. Yeah, the world keeps on... When you realize the world keeps on moving, it's a freeing thought. And you're like, oh, this is not the Yeah, not everybody is thinking about me. Right. Nobody really cares. Do you want to do any any little life hacks? Yeah, let's I know start people like that yeah. last time. Yeah. Yeah. So start us off, PFT. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Th- we actually just talked about this briefly on the ride over here. I've started in the last like three, four years... To uh, to put my clothes away at hotel rooms when I know I'm going to be staying there Whoa. for like four days, it's good. three or four days. I don't live out of the suitcase. I set up the kitchen sink or the sorry the bathroom sink with like all the shit that I need out there. Never and done it. Never really. You've never unpacked. Oh, at a it hotel? feels great. I've oh, lived in hotels then, too. And like, then you call the hotel home. Like, let's go back home. It does. It feels really it's good. Fast. You it's, wake up and in the morning you yeah. go to your drawer and you pull it out and you're like, yeah. I know where everything is. It's like a little mini home. Hang up your shit. Although it's the I, best. I got, I got I've hung up stuff. I had a one for bachelor parties. Be do uh, get up early one morning and clean the whole place. You're the king for the whole weekend. There's that one guy, like, if you get a house, if you make the effort, because there's, it's always that, like, who's cleaning, everyone knows the yeah. asshole who doesn't do anything. If you're just, like, one morning, you're like, all right, I'm getting up, and, like, everyone's going to get up, and they're going to see the whole place is clean. You now have, like, basically checked off your, I, I've i done something to help the crew here. To expand on that, I think just the the every so often grand gesture in general is a great play. Um, right. The, the like selectively picking up the tab. If you're someone that doesn't have a lot of money and, and you know, that, that you can't, you can't not pick up the tab every single time. One time when you're at like a, maybe a mid tier restaurant, you're not out at the really fancy place with all the friends. You're like, you know what guys, I got this one. And then they'll remember it forever. Yes. You know, like the over, I, that, that was a trick I pulled with my, my rich friends once they got to the NBA and they'd come back. I would try like one once every like two years. I would pick up the tab, and they would all look at me like, "What the fuck?" Like, and, I, I, and then I feel like in my mind, I've positioned myself, unlike all those other mooches over here. Like, I'm, I'm trying. I'm doing my best, and I don't know. It you know? it also is like if you are in a spot where you've made you know some money, and you have people you're working with who haven't like doing the little things of like picking up lunch, doing shit yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, it actually. It's, yeah. it, it matters. You know what I mean? And like people, I, I also am a big believer in like, if you do, if you're in a spot where you're whatever job you're in and you have people that do a really like good job helping you be better, mm-hmm. you have to make sure that you take care of them. Like I, I heard a story once that like Saban just like, he has everyone over to his house, like everyone literally like yeah. ball boys, like everyone who has anything to do with the program and like everyone gets like a huge Christmas bonus. And it's like, from like every person down the line and it's like that type of thing like if you have a if you're in a spot where you have the ability to do that it means a lot to people and you don't want to be the guy who doesn't do that no. who was it that we we're talking to that had like matt lafleur over and he thought he was going to a party but brian he, kelly yeah yeah but that's, he was, that's oh, ryan's yeah, yeah. guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah your guy he brian cool. kelly and he was just, he was with Sala, but that's right? he was just the that ballet matters. he was the cooler guy yeah. that story's so bad i almost can't believe it's true 
Like uh-huh. apparently Kelly invited Sala and, and LaFleur. LaFleur over and they thought they were going to a Christmas party and instead they stayed outside and parked yeah. cars. Yeah, they parked cars for me. Yeah. But they like did. little shit like that, well, it's like there's... I don't even know. I, I don't know. That's so bad. If there, it's true. But there is like, uh, you know, I think you have that, to take care of people that are... No, but there's a, there's a bigger thing than what you're saying and you're yeah. right. You're totally yeah. right. And you know, you got you may not learn it till a little bit later. You know, you also have to be the person that's in position. Like, look, early on, Van Pelt paid for every dinner. Right. Okay, he just knew. He was going to pay for everybody. He's going to take care of everybody. Then I get to a certain point where it's like, hey, let me grab a check here. Like, I know it's your move. Yep. But let me grab one yeah. just like Ty was talking about. Like, it's almost like if, if, you know, I remember like dating somebody when I was younger and she didn't have any money. I didn't have any money. And I paid. And then like once a month, she'd be like, I got it. And it meant the world yeah. to me. It's yeah. a good point. Right? The reverse. Yeah. And yeah. I've had other people I've hung out with where they had money and they, they wouldn't fucking cross the street for 10 bucks. Then they'd ask me for it instead. You know, right. and you're just like, look, it's just a little, but I think what you're saying is like, I'll get all these life advice emails about, well, we had the bill was this. And then after this vacation, it ended up being all these different things. And it can sound like, well, Hey, you guys are now older and you've made some money. You're more dismissive. And I'm like, look, we just spent all this time talking about how hard it was to make friends and to meet friends when you're older and stuff. And some of you fucking guys want to argue over $75 from a fucking <laughs> yes. bachelor party weekend where you're ready to... To- and I get like, hey, there is a guy in the group that always thinks he's winning by not kicking in money. Right. And it fucking sucks. And the only thing you can do is just keep hammering him on it when he keeps doing it all the time. And mm-hmm. that's his role in the friend group. But don't be so like ready to go on some of the money stuff where it's like you realize like some of the stuff you guys are going to lose lifelong friends over 50 or 75 you know look if somebody keeps doing it like i said i can understand it being an issue but i can't believe how many emails we get and you're just like all right you want to start cutting guys off because of happy hour after fucking at 26 years old go ahead but you're gonna regret it yeah yeah. i would uh i would encourage people to call for more meetings now that i've been out in la for a couple years People love fucking meetings. They love telling you who you could meet with Just and they'll set up and a meeting. meeting. I would say you should take that back to like the Midwest, Midwest sensibilities, maybe maybe Northeast, Pacific Northwest, American Southwest, yeah. love turquoise. Uh <laughs> Take, Shout out turquoise. Just if you're at the office and you're 23, <laughs> mm-hmm. just start asking people to meet. Uh, do you ever? Yeah, say no, it? you do feel important when you got a meeting. It's like, oh, I got a meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll still never forget this one intern like emailed Greeny. This guy was out of control. He's the most aggressive intern I've ever seen in my entire life. He would just start emailing guys on the corporate email to be like, would like to set aside some time with you for like 30 minutes or whatever. <laughs> and Greeny was like, do I know what? And he would like leave the voice. I was like, why do I have a lunch at 1045 oh. with, that? do I, did, did I agree to this? What? And he was so confused. And it happened to Van Pelt. Van Pelt one time was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and this intern was just running around ESPN, smart, just uh-huh. booking meet. And he would actually like he would phrase it in a way that was vague, right? So it wasn't like, "Do you want to meet?" Because that's right. a no. It would be like, "Was hoping to follow through on the time I had set aside." Right. And you're yeah, like, right, right. "What the fuck is going on?" That's so genius. again. That guy went a little too hard with it. And then once everybody kind of figured him out, I think he got a talking to because it was like, hey, I don't think Chris Fowler is going to meet with you anytime soon. I don't Chris Fowler wouldn't meet with me. Uh, but don't be afraid to maybe, you know, hey, I'd like meeting? to follow up on something you said here. Uh-huh. Yep. And take that L.A. sensibility and apply that Ooh, to other places. I like that. Off of that, too, you my favorite thing to do. And I think most people know this, but like maybe like first week of December is the perfect time to be like, let's touch base after New Year's and just Ooh, fucking yeah. push everything. Yeah. Like, you can start that, like, the day after Thanksgiving. Like, like Should you know what? Hollywood. Let's, let's Hollywood save this for after New Year's. Hollywood doesn't do vacations. They shut down, like, seasonally. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll be like, hey, be like, hey, can you get this in? And I'll be like, why do I have to? And be like, wow, well, you know, people are going to pick it back around February 12th. <laughs> you're like, what? The meeting thing is good, though. It really does make you feel important. When you're like, let's have a meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this. Like the meat. Okay. We now welcome on a very, very, very special guest. Long time coming. It is the Schwam Boomer, Chris Berman. You know, the the natural thing that you would say if somebody was doing the squealed pig play, that would be a whoop situation. Yes. No, 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 no. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, and fumbling would be part of it. The whoop came from Barry Sanders. Ooh. Okay. So that it came as a whoa. There is no other way to describe Barry's. 
I think his ankles were bionic. Tommy and I both think this because he there's no Smooth. way you could swivel as a human being like this. Speed. And so yeah. that was the whoop, the whoop. That was more <laughs> Barry's moves that come from Barry Sanders. Uh-huh. He's he's the the impetus for that. And now it's anybody that kind of does that. Yes. Now it, it because the sound I get stopped all the time like 15 20 years whoop, like say it. Whoop, ah, and they go 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 nuts. But it's so now I've moved it to the squeal pig, but it was started with Barry Sanders and, of course, a Lamar Jackson type of player right. you would do it with. But that's where it came from, out of respect for Barry. So what is the secret to a good whoop? Uh, I've, heard you hit, I've heard you hit somewhere. It was it one on a Washington player, wasn't it? Back. Was it McKissick? Yes. He left, it was like down at the right somewhere. Uh, yeah, it was, um, it was against the Falcons. It was like early, like early October or something. It, you let out this whoop that I swear. Oh, yeah. You could hear it. It bounced off the back wall of the studio and <laughs> yeah. came back to you. Yeah. I heard it twice in the highlight. Yeah. Uh, I, I was inspired by his leap. Like he took a five yard. It was like a uh, someone trying to do the pole vault, you know, in the Olympics. Like mm-hmm. he's running a long way to take this leap. It wasn't just a, a little leap because the tackler went low. Mm-hmm. I don't even think the tackler went that low. He's a little guy. Yeah. So he went. I. It was like the first, it was at halftime, right? Uh, uh, yep. uh, so it was the first real whoop of the season that I could crank out on a halftime play. I do think of that every now and then. Early in the year, let's let's put more ingredients in it a little bit. You got to warm I mean? up the pipes, right? <laughs> yeah. You got to warm it up first. Yeah, gotta, yeah it was not the first you play. You got to prime it like the two pump minutes a little in. bit. Right. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Do, you, do you like open up your chest? Is it from the diaphragm? Is it just like McKissick did? I took a running leap. Yeah, (laughs) it is. I mean, even you doing those little whoops for Barry Sanders, like we do it, but when you do it, it's like, oh yeah, that's but you're doing it. You like it. Yeah. But like the way you just did that, the little public domain, like it's not the same. It's it's only you. We also love the the Raiders. I try to do the Raiders when we run the scores back. I do it as much as I, as I can. You do a good job. I've heard it. it, it, Thank you so much. That means the world to me. Uh, But when I do it, I feel like it takes my, my entire body about two minutes to recover from it. I don't know if that's something. It does. It hurts. Yeah. It's like, well, that, that really is, it's again, it's taken on a life of its own, but, and everybody loves that. And Scott, of course, Van Pelt runs it. I mean, he, yep. he he has my best couple, and he has it on a button. <laughs> Even if they're not playing, I think he presses it. Um, they, it was really an, an ode to Al Davis, yeah, who really liked us. Uh, Al, this is his, Al's voice in the '80s when I met him first couple times. You know why I root for ESPN? Because you're the underdog, <laughs> just like that, like. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And the Raiders, and they were winning all the time. Then, of course, you heard him all the other Raiders. So that's really an ode to Al. So a lot of these are ode to Barry, Al. So that, but the Raiders now everybody loves the law. That again, yep. that's great. That's a Louis Tian windup. Okay, yeah. that's a Raiders. I didn't even. I'm, I'm right. Yeah, you're just taking batting a, practice. I haven't had right a now. sip of water in a half an hour. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'm gonna. So I'll be ready the next time you ask me so, that. So, all right. So the whoop, the Raiders, we got to do circle the wagons because that's, I mean, that picture too of you holding the big Bills jersey. Well. And we're, we're, we're honorary members of Bills Mafia. We love right the on. city of Buffalo. We love Josh Allen. But there's just something about no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. It just. Well, that team of the late 80s and 90s were. I mean, they never won a Super Bowl, but they, they only wanted to go to four straight. So say no more. And it's Hall of Famers. And, and obviously Jim Kelly and Andre Reid and Thurman Thomas and Bruce Smith. And, you know, they may have others. And Cornelius Bennett was a great player. We could go on Marv's. Marv Levy's in the Hall of Fame. Bill Pullian, one of the great executives of all times in the Hall of Fame. Ralph Wilson, the owners in the Hall of Fame. I mean, it, and it's Buffalo. Right. You know, it's it's other than Green Bay, it's about the smallest now. I mean, it, it's the Bills, and this is the city in western New York. They asked for nothing. I started picking them in 88. They were horrible for the whole decade. They thought I was out of my mind. They started 4-0, and and I got to the championship game and lost to the Bengals. I actually thought these Bengals, except they've now gone to the Super Bowl, reminded me of the 88 Bills. Like, I wasn't sure they were going to get past Kansas City, but they've already announced, we're here for a while. Like, we're really good. Yeah. You know, I, I actually said that. So 
I forget what game it was, and I just cranked it out on, on prime time. No one, you know, looking right in the camera. Like, <laughs> no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, and it became a war chant. Even the years they were terrible, I mean, up until Josh here and Coach McDermott, et cetera, not a lot of great, right? right? Um, but it just became so much fun. And I, I don't want to do this, but I guess I will tell the story since you brought it up. So if you're a rock and roll singer, let's say because I saw Billy Joel in Fenway and then you're singing Piano Man and everybody knows the words, right? He played at Wrigley. He played, he played all these places, any arena. And you get halfway through and then you lay out and you hear, if you're Billy Joel, like hear them sing every word. And he's like, oh my, oh my, oh my God. Like this is... So when Thurman Thomas had his number retires only about four years ago, it was on a Monday night, and they asked me, Thurman, did, would I come up and the bills? It's a quick, I'm going to speak real quick. Someone else is going to say something for a minute. Thurman's going to speak. It's halftime. And I got up for 20 seconds. I mean, again, the place is packed. They're playing the Patriots when the Patriots would still beat them a lot. This was, they, they played well that night, Buffalo. They weren't ready yet, you know. I think Josh was a rookie, okay. So I think. Yeah, he was. Um, and I said, okay, Buffalo, you know where we're going here. We're doing it on three. And like this, and there's 70,000. I went, no one. And then I stopped. And I heard, circles the wagons, like the Buffalo Bills. I, I'm, wow. That's Billy Joel singing Piano Man. In it, in it, it, it was really, my relationship, in my 43 years, the relationship that I've ended up by accident because I'm on ESPN and the Bills and it's Buffalo and the P the players, the, the, the team, the organization, the players, and the city 30 years later. It's the most rewarding relationship I've gotten through my job. They're great people. Yeah, we've, we've they're great people. We've experienced they something ask similar. nothing. They ask yeah. for nothing. Yeah. We every time we go, it's like this place. One thing I wrote down that I have to bring up, uh we're a big fan of yours all around. Big fan of your golf game as it's well. All right. mm -hmm. Love the wide brim hats. Has has anybody ever told you like maybe don't wear a gray shirt when you're going to be out in the <laughs> no, ninety five degree sun? Shirt. Yeah. yeah, sweating. I sweated at twelve. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, so it's it, I sweated a long time ago before I was well. I'm better. I you know I lost a lot of weight now, but I mean again, that's the it's the Titanic losing a few deck chairs. So um, uh, they're floating right out there right now. So. Um, um, Gray, I never wore gray. No, it's always colorful. But I mean, if it's Legendary warm and sweat. hot, and you got a carnation shirt, you know, or a <laughs> or a, a nice sharp purple shirt. Mm -hmm. Look, I is what if you've ever come to my studio, which now I mean I'm only, but back in the day, three hours, you know, countdown. Even in September, the camera people had to wear a jacket. You could hang meat in there. Yeah, because I sweat in an igloo. Yeah, okay. I, run, I run pretty hot too. They're, no, they're, good, after so I do good a show, shirts. Yeah, why shirts? Shirt for yeah, hide right. a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. The, it gets it's like a magic eye poster. Yeah, black and that would be yeah, black, rough. Always, but I wear black shirts. Well, right, because, but yeah, not on a golf course yes, when no, it's eighty-eight. Yes, yes. Can we tell you something <laughs> funny that you probably have no idea about? That's a very weird. You're gonna think we're stalkers. Your uh, suit cleaner in Connecticut, yeah, had a signed poster. Of is it you. the grid father? We have that in our studio. He gave it to us. I can, I can send you as many as you want. <laughs> we what? have that one from your dry cleaner. No, because his son is a huge fan of That's ours. Very funny. And he said, I've had this. My dad's done the Schwamm suits for 30 years. I want you guys to have it. It's sitting in our studio. That's it's very up. funny. Every single time you you know come in, it's right there. I have I have plenty of them. They supposed to print 400 20 years ago, and I. There's four thousand, so I I haven't gotten rid of all those. Okay, they're, they're yeah. in the basement. I, but I that can, guy, here, I mean, your dry cleaner's got the grid a, father. We yeah. made it look. Like, there's even a knuckle it's, ring. There's everything. It, it's mm -hmm. Pacino ish. Yeah, you know? but the, your dry cleaner, he's probably had to do some work with the sweat. Oh yeah, and some some, some was like, just sorry, I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so this has been incredible. We got to wrap. I mean, we, we don't want to take you know your entire life here. But we gotta we gotta do your best nicknames. What are your best nicknames? What are the ones that you you know at the end of the day it's like oh that one because we have some of yours that we. Oh, love. I want to hear those, but 
So are we going football? All right. Whatever you want to do. Well, we'll do yeah, football last because uh, okay. that's kind of – I mean, so baseball, a lot of them now will predate even so much you guys because I'm going to the ones that – because the 80s I did 10 sports centers a week. We all did. Bob Lee did. Tommy Meese did. John Saunders. Today's John's birthday. We lost him, what, five years ago, six years ago? Great. You know, we could go on and on. All the guys, all the guys we, we did um, 10 shows a week. Doesn't make us heroes, but hey – we're we're a network, but we have one fourth of the staff. So you okay to do the next show? Well, I did the list. Yeah, we got another one. Go ahead. So did baseball all the time. So the best. I'll go right to that. Bert Blylevin, because that's be home Blylevin. Yep. Yeah. Because you don't have to see the a lot of these nicknames are you don't have to know a he's a pitcher. B, he pitches for the Twins or the, the Pirates or whoever. C, he has a curveball. We got him into the Hall of Fame. You are a kid, and you heard from your parents, be home by 11. And as a parent, you've told your kid, be home by 11. You don't have to be a genius to figure these out. Right. So that's probably the best. I mean, the early ones, baseball, Jose, can you see Cruz? Julio, won't you let me take you on a sea cruise? A lot of them were from Rock and Roll, Vaughn, Purple, Hayes. A couple that stuck, and I just saw him last month, Crime Dog McGriff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, that stuck with him. Doggy. Like, yeah. he's, every player calls him Doggy. He loves, he's such a good guy. Certainly borderline Hall of Famer. Didn't touch a thing, and he hit almost 500 home runs, by the way. Mm-hmm. But, um, Chuck uh, Knobloch's one of my favorites. New favorite. kids on Knobloch. Yeah, and <laughs> he liked it too, even when he didn't make the throw correctly. Yep, yep. Um, the, oh, now I'm spa- – um, Ro- Roberto, remember the Alomar, that history book. Uh-huh. Yep, <laughs> you know I love I mean? that one. Uh, I mean, it, it, food. There was a movie, blame it – or not food, but uh, George Taco Bell. I mean, like uh-huh. that with yep. Toronto. Like food. Everyone knows what Taco Bell is. You don't have to know he plays for Toronto. That's the – that's the best part of them. And it's, did I really hear that? And and even if I get a chuckle out of them, yeah. that's even more so. What, what do you have baseball? So one with? of my favorite baseball ones is Miguel Tejada. Very good. See, I'm going to, I don't forget these. Yeah, Tejada, they Miguel- come, Tejada, they fall. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? <laughs> the mm-hmm. best. I mean, it's, we are, right? Jimmy Cliff. Uh, uh, the best. It, um Oh, man, so I'm going too far back. I'm trying to think of... Well, we can go to football, too. Football oh, football's a ton. Yeah. Um, so football, the best ones are those you can deliver under the highlights. You can sing with them. Uh, we've resurrected Lido Shepherd this year with Debo, mm-hmm. you know, which is Boss Skaggs. Debo? Whoa, it's the Lido Shuffle, one of the great wind-up songs of all time. They, we used to do it for Lido Shepard, defensive back Philadelphia. The, the GM of the, of the Niners, John Lynch, texted me like a month ago, Debo, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you know, <laughs> and I've known Lynch since he played, of course. But um, so when Steve Bono would go back to pass and complete it, you could go, do, 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 do. I got you, babe, on a completion, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you could go, <laughs> so Elvis Gerback. Again, these are all, but there are plenty right now. Um, if Elvis went back and was going to be sacked, caught in a trap, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, it, okay, Mark Bulger, remember him with the Rams? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the Scarecrow, uh-huh. Ray Bulger, right? So he'd go back to bed, da, 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 da. if I could only find a receiver, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then the kickers had a lot of them, mm-hmm. yep. um, including David Green Acres and, and at the vet they used to play the theme from the TV set. But this yep. is old. So now, and the guy that should be a head coach is, is Eric sleeping with B enemy. Yep. You know, like the, he should be. And, and that was really, Curtis, my favorite, Martin. Um, Martian was a TV show. Um <laughs> obscure good for this audience do you remember Steelers primarily fullback Chris uh, Mafala yes Fumatu Mafala yes we called him Chris 
for my too bad, my father. <laughs> <laughs> and then good. Tommy would chime in because that came out of Shaft. It was with a, it, you know, can you dig it? Can you dig it? Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> um, shut your mouth. We but throw those, are, those in too. The we, we'll throw in like the Tej going back with the. Boom. I know yeah. that. Yeah, and you're no, absolutely well, right, Ben. No, I'm th so now. See, okay, now. I have yeah, we're missing a couple of my absolute well, favorite. Well, I know PFT's Joe, got some he's favorites. in the Super Bowl. Joe, who's in the Super Bowl? So I'm going quickly. Joe mix and match. It's okay. It's not great. It's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking it's, it's Bengals. I can give you one for the Bengals Go if you ahead. want. Please. So Joe Burrow throws a pass to Jamar Chase. Burrow and Chase hide and seek. It works. It's in. Mm -hmm. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Or you could go, um, what do we do for Joe for Joe Burrow? Do we do like January Joe? All, all systems Joe. Yeah. Which is what it is. Think about it. Yeah. Man. Two years ago he won the national title and now he can win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yep. Two years ago he sat in the box with us at the at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Now he's playing in it. He might win. It's crazy. It's not, I mean, good, good for him. Um but why am I I mean we have Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, the Chuba missile crisis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Chuba <laughs> missile <laughs> crisis. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a. Go ahead. Well, I your, mean, your Jake turn. Delome. Huh? Jake Delome is one of my all-time favorites. Daylight come and you got a Delome. Yeah, you got I mean, a that's, Delome. Right. <laughs> that one's. And then John Kitna was my other favorite that you always well, do. Yeah. He. Uh, well, with Kit. Uh, go ahead. Kitna Caboodle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, I hadn't thought of him in a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, but that's. I love those. Look at a lot of them. A lot of the kickers. Um, and I, I you had get, I think it was uh with Jeff Fiegels, Jeff Philadelphia Fiegels, which know, is like so it's so easy, but it's just so funny to say because he's playing for the Giants, and you're like Jeff Philadelphia know, Fiegels. It, some, some, but when they work, when they're from where they're from, <laughs> yeah, like like Royce Clayton was a shortstop with the Giants. Royce Aroni Clayton, mm -hmm. <laughs> the San Francisco <laughs> treat, you know, like oh. but Jeff. Uh, not Fiegel's, Jay Feely, who TV now. Yeah. So I would do the who for that one on, on long ones. See me, Feely. <laughs> and you like to sing, right? You, yeah, I, have you sung the anthem or anthem, something? Anthem, yeah, when we do our boxing, yeah. <laughs> That's a hard song. It is. It is. It is. Bob Seger and Huey Lewis and, and there's the other Stephen Stills. Like they, they, it's really cool that... And what you guys are finding. Yes, you have your hardcore audience that, that sports and all, but you, you meet people from all over America, Canada, et cetera, white, black, old, young, who like, hey, we're football fans, yeah. for example. And sports has allowed me and us to, allowed me to meet you guys. Football frankly. fans. You like football. We like you football. You like football? I like, like no, like I like football. I like football. I like football. Let's have let's let's have a let's have a meal. What do you, what do you, you want to talk? It's football? a perfect ending. You want to talk yeah. football? Some or? spread <laughs> from a commercial. <laughs> uh -huh. We have our very favorite, probably one of our top three favorite guys that is in the Pardon My Take universe. It is Tim Woods <laughs> on the show for a special. Uh, edition of Dungeons and Dragons where we are going to have this whole episode will be an entire adventure and we have added uh, the biggest nerd in the office in Nick Tarani. <laughs> That's fair He's to say. He's here. Hot seat Jake. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, an incredible experience. We're going to start fresh because we know we've done a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons episodes where like the first hour of the episode was us re recapping what happened in the last one. Mm -hmm. So we're like, fuck it. Let's just start fresh. Let's do an extended version all in one episode. I am so excited. Tim, take it away. Absolutely. Yes. It's so good yeah. to be here. Yes. Great to be back. It's been a while, and I'm so excited for us to dive back into d and I think it's also going to be great that we're starting fresh. The adventure that I have planned for us today is a classic. It is known as Lost Minds of Fandelver. It is one of the most well-known D&D adventures, and it is, in fact, the one that we started playing but only did a little bit of before we turned upon each other and killed each other. So mm. now I think we're actually going to do... And that was do. like three years that ago, That was too. so I long ago. Maybe it was the old Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Hank, are you going to drink those beers or are they just for show? I actually should. They're getting heavy on my head. Yeah. Yeah. Drink them. So go ahead and drink them. Crack them up. Got to lighten up that encumbrance. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, Hank's cracking the beers. Let's do it, though. Absolutely, and in fact, our story begins with a little bit of drinking, as it were. Here we we go. At dinner, and drinks are being served, because, of course, they always are being served at a dwarven merchant's Mm -mm. house. We Mm. are at the home of one Gundren Rockseeker. He's a dwarven merchant, one of the three Rockseeker brothers, and the first things they serve in his house are always the drinks first, food second. It sounds like second priority. Sounds like a crackhead. Bill Cosby's house. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Makes him strong. (laughs) Fuck. And uh, I'll just say that Wayne, the bard, uh, just a reminder as to who our characters are. Wayne, the bard, you are also a dwarf. So I'm going to say that's probably how you know Gundren Rockseeker already. As a dwarf in the city of Neverwinter, you are part of that dwarven community. Right, but uh, like dwarf, it's not because I'm short. Right. Um. It, no, it's not just because okay, you're short. Okay, it's good, because good, good. dwarves tend to congregate together. They're right, very really close knit so yeah. families yeah, and clans, yeah. and they are d- always hanging out together. A lot of dwarves in Neverwinter know each other and are part of this thriving community. Boys are back in town. The yeah. boys are back in town. Yes. Absolutely. And Norm the Barbarian. That's me. You are a human, and in theory, in the thriving city of Neverwinter, you're even rarer than a dwarf Ooh. because most of the barbarians live out in Neverwinter Woods, which is full of like werewolves and witches and all kinds of monsters. You are making maybe one of your rare visits to the city of Neverwinter, mainly because Gundren Rockseeker has offered you money I, for a I'm job. Like the, I'm like the uh, kid that Bleacher Report posts, like the, the seventh grader who's seven feet, and he's just dunking on a bunch of like like five foot kids. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, that's okay. me right now. Absolutely. Though you are younger than yes. Gundren, you are significantly larger yes. than him. As a barbarian, <laughs> you are muscled and strong and very much stand a good twice the height of Gundren yeah. when you are standing. This kid's going to be a problem <laughs> in 2030. Absolutely. It never is. <laughs> yeah, never is. Always like, nope, he was just taller than everyone. <laughs> He's got the natural yeah. talent, but you got to level it up, yes. of course. You're going to learn how to play thing. center in seventh grade, and then <laughs> you're never going to grow, and you're going to be like 6'3". Yeah. No clumsy ball skills as, whatsoever. Clumsy as fuck. Yeah. Okay. It's it a good analogy for a barbarian because whereas you don't focus on the strategy of fighting, you just rush right in and rage. have all that natural rage Love that it. is carrying you through. Yeah. You know, you said something about drugs and he forgot about that. He is just focused. He has spilled all the beans Can about this map. Can we ask him if, if he knows where to get some drugs though? Just for tonight? Yeah. <laughs> he says, I mean, I do... And he pulls it out of one of his bags, uh-huh. this oh. pouch. Not for says, me, by the way. I, I've got, I've, I've got, I've got some pipe leaf here. Mm. If, if that's what you need, we can break this out. And Blaze I it. just listen. I just ask you keep it away from Gundren because if he starts blazing this tonight, he's never gonna leave. He's just gonna hang out. And the next thing I know, I'll be the one tying him onto his pony to get him out the city gate. It's got gonna it, be right. a whole mess. Right. Got it. Facts. I smelled the weed and I called the guards. Oh. Make a perception <laughs> check if you wish to smell what, what the, is in the pouch. <laughs> this would be a d20 roll for you. Yeah, I got. Is this mid leaf? Thirteen. <gasps> mm-hmm. oh, this God. is some long bottom leaf right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sticky icky. OG and, Kush. Uh, with a persuasion of plus six, a nineteen. I'm gonna say you don't know where it's coming from this house, but you are catching a whiff. And I don't like it. Of some dank pipe. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> one bit. Real dank pipe. Straight <laughs> gas. <laughs> and, and, and as a paladin of protection, you certainly like, mm, tiss, tiss, tiss. Like, this is, this I'm is hearing it, it. against the law. <gasps> <is> wow. <loud>. What? <laughs> oh, I'm, a, I'm a pussy. <laughs> the laws of Neverwinter strictly state that pipe, pipe leaf use is, is, is regulated. But, you know, the, the uh, law enforcement isn't really cracking down on it that much anymore. It's uh, not okay. that big a deal. Uh, like, just throwing this out here. I think we should smoke cake out. Mm. I think we should make cake get high. Mm. He should sample it. Mm. <laughs> Tim, they made me do dip a few months ago. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, that it was bad. <laughs> okay. He does love the long cut, yeah. And mm-hmm. I had to take my shirt off at a hockey game and wear fake boobs. <laughs> okay. I, I suppose that was a step <laughs> one, then step two. <laughs> of, of, of Can't the wait old till Jake process. court one day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him high real quick. Just take one hit, cake. Uh, certainly, we would have the opportunity. Gundren is ready to break out just tobacco pipe leaf, and if somebody were to do a little switcheroo, a little it might take do. a little while before somebody realized that they had, were not, in fact, smoking tobacco pipe leaf. Hmm. All right, let's do it. Absolutely. So you've got the sticky icky right now. Well, uh, Hank actually wh- does. I gave him some before we walked in. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, in real life. 
<laughs> okay, oh. there, there you go. Absolutely. I'll say, Wayne, right now, you've just been given some by Sildar. The other characters, I'll say of all the other characters, it would be Norm and Ehrlich who would be the most likely to just be starting play with a little bit of their own pipe weed. Um, and you certainly have a large pouch of some that Sildar has just given you, hoping that you won't say more about what you know at this point to Gundry. Mm. I won't say anything, but I do want him to smoke it. Absolutely. When you get back, I'm going to say dinner's done. Uh, Gundren is packing pipes, wooden pipes for everybody, of some of the finest tobacco. This is kind of like cigars in his mind that he is passing around to everybody. Uh, do you want to do anything as Cake is about to receive his uh, uh, wooden pipe of tobacco? I'd like to put on some cool music. Oh, absolutely. Jake, you want um, to now, putting... Oh, actually, you can literally do what you're saying because you can either break out an instrument to play it or you could create an illusion of EDM. your favorite music. Yeah, yeah I want to do a hologram Tupac. Wait, no. Absolutely. Ooh. An actual Ho incubus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dwarves are historically not very uh, friendly to people who have killed their uh, brothers and they are very tight Okay, so here, here's what we do. That's yeah, we didn't yeah, kill his brother. Not yet, true. certainly. We should kill him. We should take his penis and bring it with us to Fandolin and go to his we brothers and be like, sports again? and look, look, look what we got, your brother's dick. <laughs> And then we kill him. Let's cut off the head so they see it's the dick is detached. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good call. Yeah. Good call. I would be prepared to say they may not recognize that body part. Oh, they, they're sight, brothers. Yeah, they are brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a head is going to be much yeah. more recognizable. They used to take baths I could name together. everyone's cock in here. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Do my flaws come into play? Uh, your flaws are yours to decide. There are some advised flaws here and yeah. personality traits, but you get to decide whether those are true or not. Those are just recommended choices. I have an insatiable desire for carnal pleasures. This is a fact about the human paladin that he wrestles with this carnal pleasure, apparently. Bonk. I'm so afraid of death, I need to get one more lay-in. Absolutely, yes. I, I'm going to try to fuck cake. <laughs> okay, absolutely. You are feeling overcome by your carnal desire. I'm going to ask when you say you are trying to fuck cake, do you mean you are just trying to uh, approach him right now and do this, or you're trying to convince him? This is a good idea. Convince him. Absolutely. I'm trying to get consent for fucking. I would like to know, number one, what you're saying, but number two, what your persuasion skill is. Oh, wow, you're very persuasive. You have a plus six on this. <laughs> you're a handsome man. I turn, so... into, I turn into a cartoon wolf and my tongue rolls <laughs> yes! out of my mouth. Absolutely. And I have to use like, a tuna can lid to get it back in. Absolutely. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. You're kind of seeing like ahead of you, cake is getting spells at the ready. Yeah, and it, he look, is. It looks hot. His ass is yeah. jiggling in that robe. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. What are you gonna say to cake? The combat has just broken out, <laughs> and you're fucking. I'm just. I'm gonna bite my bottom lip and just say, "Wow." That's all, that's actually very. Good. That's Thank all you, you say. Yeah. 100. percent Make a persuasion check. Fuck! Seven. Oh, that was a one. With a plus six. That is not as bad as it could have been. A one would have been very good right now, honestly. Uh, but a 13, I'm going to say with a 13, I will not force Cake to make a wisdom saving throw. It's not seductive enough that he is in that position. But Cake, I will ask you, how are you responding to this sort of advance? Maybe so just... he wants to have sex with me? It's right clear now. what he is doing is biting his bottom lip and just saying, wow, <laughs> and it's enough that you can tell it's directed at you. you just... it, it was provocative enough you looked back and you saw the look on his face. Just let him give you head. Don't be a prude. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I can't lie about what's going on. Something's going on downstairs, so. Yeah. Oh, All right, that's, that's the truth. That's, now I will ask, Love if that you. is the case, yeah. are you trying to hide this and play hard to get? Or, Ooh. yeah. I don't know if I have the balls to do that, so I'm just going to straight up tell him. <gasps> it's on. I, it's yeah. true. Charisma is not your strong suit, and yeah. so it would be hard for you to hide <laughs> the feelings that you're having yeah. right now. I like telling the truth, straight up. Absolutely. What do you tell him? I tell him, let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. I'm going to roll for the goblins real quick. Uh, and the goblins are like, what the fuck is going on down there? They immediately understand them off. there's yeah. some arousal going on here, and they are like, whoa, whoa. And they are so thrown off their game, immediately you, you hear, uh, I think someone here does speak goblin. I think it would be the barbarian. You can tell that the goblins are saying, wait, do we... 
We still <laughs> we still fight them. And the other goblins are like, yeah, yes. I don't know what they're doing right now. Uh, and the goblins are like getting disadvantage on any attack rolls they do mm -hmm. because they're so thrown off their game so of like, like a little into I knew this. Yeah. Would I think we're attacking the wrong group. <laughs> These guys are just plan. in love. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Norm, I'm sorry to say you just got critical <laughs> hit by what you think is a ghoul. And this ghoul is hitting you with its claws. So I'm going to need you to make oh, a constitution man. saving throw as the ghoul's claws hit you. No, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't feel good for you, boy, plus, Norm. Plus six, I believe you have, because you're quite good at this. Four. Oh, oh I'm sorry to say, with a 10, that is not going to be enough. You constitution are destroyed. <gasps> Norm. I'm so sorry to say that since you are not, you weren't able to rage because there were no enemies around Pussy. to rage against at the moment. And I'm so sorry to say that you just took <laughs> 20, da or sorry, 18 damage That's from fine. the claws 55. of the ghoul. They leap up to you. He starts throttling you and digging your claws in. Oh. And that was the bad part. Here's the worst part. Oh. Oh. Damn it, Tim. As the claws dig into your neck, you start to feel your muscles Locking oh, no. up. Oh no, this you poison. are paralyzed oh. by the claws of the <laughs> They're going to have to push you around and you're fat oh. as fuck. That means that as you're getting paralyzed, the ghoul's Someone looking around. Me. He's going to turn to Bran. The year of Hank continues. Me. It has one more attack and it wanted to do that bite attack against somebody else to like try to take on another ally. Except when you get paralyzed, the ghoul's instincts kick in. It loves when people get paralyzed because then it can feast slowly oh, no. and it's gonna bite you <laughs> because it has advantage on this attack roll oh, now man. that you're paralyzed. Avenge my death. <gasps> That's going to be a 21 to hit you, I'm sorry to say. Oh, God. That means he gets critical hit damage for the bite attack as well. But he's rolling bad on this so far. Uh, okay, he stopped that. Nine so far, 10 plus two, another 12 points of damage. So Norm, fucker. you've taken 30 damage in all oh, from can... this ghoul. And Greg, he can't touch walk, my right? balls again? You can't walk? Uh, you, certainly. The days have passed, and so in theory, your healing is back up to full now, Greg. So you could get healed again. And then the last bit of bad news after the ghoul does his what? attacks oh, against you. You did the worst news. Is that in, it, this isn't quite as bad news because nobody's attacking you right now, at least. But the two other ghouls Fuck. in the room no. look up from the bones that they are chomping on <laughs> and they just turn in that scary way <laughs> and start rushing over the beds leaping from bed to bed towards norm and the others where are my bros Ehrlich, you hear all of this and so all of you can now roll into initiative against these ghouls can my bros help me please yeah, they I, certainly yeah, I can help. otherwise i know you have mage armor as one of your spells no, shield Tim. oh i do have the shield you, you have the shield gonna, spell that's yes. gonna be very I gotta pee here. too. I was just gonna pee in this bottle. I was too, but I wanted to ask Tim first. Yeah, can I? Can we pee in our bottles? I am totally fine. I, I actually just got this one out for that reason. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I'm reminded that I have my bottle here that I'm gonna use as well. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so Jake, don't look. <laughs> so, Liam, blur out my penis. Jake, you are taking up the position against the ghouls. I'm gonna roll against you first while they're okay. busy. And here's the first claw attack against you. I'm so sorry to say, the claws of the ghoul, as you step forward, like, bring it on, it lunges forward and gets a 20 against Oy. you. Now, I'm sorry to say that your armor class <laughs> with the uh, mage armor is 16, but... If you were to use shield, that would bring it up to 21. It only lasts for one turn, but shield would protect oh. you from this claw attack. Oh, no. Are you uh, using a shield against them right now? Did you fill it up? I'm a little distracted right now. Save. Save. Sounds. I got, I got <laughs> I Did you fill it up? I got a pinch off. Well, I, I just see. peed a little on the oh tire. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Hydrated. Yeah. yeah. That's a con <laughs> that's a constitution save right there to pinch off. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just pee a little on so the if tire, you use shield, no you'll be safe from the claw. <laughs> like oh, no, oh, no. I overflowed. I overflowed. Yeah. It's <laughs> not, it doesn't hold as much as you think. I just pinched off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have the exact same color piss. <laughs> It's incredible. This is guys being dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody ever peed in a game with you before? <laughs> no, this will be a first. Love it. I don't know. What's the strategy here, guys? We're can, in a lot of trouble. I can, I can heal Norm. Okay, so should I try to draw... 
Should I try to draw the ghouls to me as I make a break for the door and try to put them onto Hank? I don't know. You would be able to do that with either deception or another too skill. too risky? But, yeah. I don't know what else I can do right now. I've got spells. I've got Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave can hit all three oh, of these. Oh, I do spells. have Unseen Servant, too, so I can get an invisible. I've, I've got an invisible friend of my own, Hank. Yes. How's that sound? So can I use my Unseen Servant? Yes, you could. Okay, to go open up the door and unleash these beasts onto Ehrlich. The answer to that is, of course, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. that is exactly Damn. what un Unseen Servant can do. So if you spend your action summoning your Unseen Servant, it immediately conjures this invisible air elemental into the air. You whisper to it, go open that door. It flies over. Now the only problem is the Unseen Servant is very weak. I need you to roll a d20 just to make sure he uh, gets this door open. It's, it's stuck like the door was when we first got it. I just rolled a two. A two, I'm sorry to say, is Fuck. not quite enough. But especially with the oh penalty God, that the unseen servant has. Shut the fuck up, or but four you actually one. Oh, there is something you can do here. And I, five. I you're like dead. Turn your own microphone. You're off. dead. With with your bonus action. No, you're literally almost dead. No, you're dead. <laughs> he can at least I can walk. Wait, wait, I right, got a bonus action. To my you get a bonus action. Yeah, I get a bonus action, bitch. You can use Do I get your to bonus go action. Nick? I'm taking him to, out. You you get to use it to inspire one person here, and I would allow that person to be your unseen servant. If you give your unseen servant inspiration, you get to add yep. a D eight to that too. Okay. All right, here and we go. So go ahead and roll a D8. You D8. inspire Which your Which one's the D8? Servant. One with eight. It's, it looks like Thanks. two pyramids <laughs> stuck together. <laughs> Thanks, Big Cat. Five. Five is enough! Yes, 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 yes. 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 You just barely get the door open! Yeah, keep open. talking that shit. Keep that same energy, Hank, when uh -huh. the door's open. What do you say to inspire Bet. your unseen servant? <laughs> I do I do my classic. It's the Draymond talking yes. to Kevin Durant. I yes. get up in his ear and I'm like, you got this, you got this. Absolutely. Man. You tell him to believe in himself. I think I'll, I'll throw I'll throw the, the guy's head with the dick on it and try to get that dick tied around his dick ear. I'll allow like that. A, like yes. an earring. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Go like ahead and roll it. Like get their tails tied together. Yeah. yeah. A, a, a king dick, as it were. Yeah. Yes. Huh? yeah. Or a dick king, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and uh, roll a d20. If you got a dick here, you can definitely hear us coming. Here we go. Uh, 17. 17. Uh, with your attack bonus, that is enough that it hits him in the ear, and I will let you roll a dexterity saving throw to avoid your ear getting tangled in that. Oh, I got a one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bitch! Hey, with, dick ear! With a natural one, it's not just tangled on your ear. Oh. It is in your ear. Yeah. You have a dick yeah. in your Far ear, dude. Kind of so poking. They're, it's so they're docked. docking. Yeah. yeah. It's docked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is docked. <laughs> it's the new hotness. Every podcast has decided they need a quarterback on once a week to make sure that they're... Uh, I don't know what... I don't. I actually don't know the reasoning behind it. I, I think I know the reasoning behind it. It's because Aaron Rodgers did it. Right. Oh, why don't we call Jared? Oh, yeah, we can call Jared. All right, all right. Good call, good call. Yeah, let's get Jared on the pod. I've got so many Oh, Jared's calling me back. Here we go. Okay. Jared. What's up? Dude, um, we're, I don't know if you've noticed, but like every podcast is having um, a quarterback on every week. Okay. So we want to have um, – we were going to have Blake on for one question every week, but we called me, didn't pick up. So you're just going to be on this week for one question. Is that cool? Sure. All right. So you're on right now. Um, or what was our one question? Our, our question was going to be, do you think Queen Elizabeth's in heaven? Oh, do you think Queen Elizabeth is in heaven? Uh, I hope so. All right, Josh, my one question. Uh, are, are you him? Um, I think there's too many hymns right now. Yeah. There's, it's like there's, church. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them going around. I think uh, you know if everybody's great, nobody's great. So we gotta. I, there's got to be a new word, you know. Gardner, I know that you. Uh, you know, you're a tough guy. We we've had you on the show. You talked about having to break your own hand, um, which was a crazy story. If the doctors were to X-ray your heart, how many dogs do you think would be in there? Man, that's a good question. Uh, but you know, I don't, I don't know if it's about the number of the dogs, but the size of the heart in the dogs, um, okay. and my dogs have big hearts. And so I'd say there's probably about two dogs with very big hearts. Okay. 
I like that. That's, it feels like. It, yeah. It's like the size of the dog in the fight. Yeah. You've got small dogs, yeah. but if you x-ray them, your dogs yeah, have you dogs in deeper. them. Yeah. One question with the quarterback, Blake Bortles. My question is, uh, we had a little bit of a discussion, possibly people reaching out to, to, to you to see if you could, you know, train, come in, you know, maybe be a backup. How are you? Are you in good shape? Are you ready to be signed by a team? Maybe even the Patriots, Hank, is trying to trying to hog all the Blakes. I did. I heard Hank mention that the other day, and I appreciate that, Hank. Um, I have not touched a football since January. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I no, I quietly, I qu- didn't tell anybody. I retired. <laughs> I go properly, just didn't tell anyone. <laughs> so I guess you guys are kind of the first to hear it publicly. Maybe it's one question with a quarterback, Kirk. We each get one question, yourself included. My one question is a very important question. I saw when you were in London after the game, you did the gritty off the field. Do you think you killed the gritty? Because I don't think it's I, I don't it's not cool anymore after you did it. <laughs> uh, I I haven't seen the tape, so I got to see the tape, and then I can give you a better answer. But uh, uh, no, there there's room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. We can all be better, Big Cat. But uh, uh, I got to watch that tape certainly, and and I would agree that anything that I do is no longer cool. So like when I wear the the plaid button down to week one, you know, it looks like I got it from Coles. But if Justin Jefferson wears that same plaid button down to next week's press conference, everybody in Minnesota is buying a plaid button down. So I'm fully aware of that. And uh, I don't want to do anything to tarnish the gritty. It's got a lot of momentum right now. So it's probably best if I just stay away from it. I hate that you have the self-awareness there because that makes me – okay, all right, that yeah, was a good answer. Tough, that was a good tough. answer to my one question. Also, God damn it. I don't think Minnesota needs any help buying button-down flannel That's shirts. That's true. I feel like That's they, true. <laughs> they're doing okay. Yeah, yeah, I fit right in. Yeah. That's why I fit right in. Yeah, we have to be very efficient with these questions because we only get one. So I'll just tell people check out the Joe Burrow Foundation. I'll give you that plug right off the bat because I'm a nice guy. My uh, question for you is if you could get one guy for the month of December and the playoffs, so you get him for the playoffs too to join the Bengals, between Odell Beckham, LeBron James at tight end, or Harambe is alive again and he's playing defensive end (laughs) and he's doing a three-man rotation with Trey and Sam Hubbard, who are you taking? You got to take Harambe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the strength to – weight ratio is just way higher than humans you got to get after the quarterback in the playoffs you have to be able to to heat them up like you got to you got to take josh allen or mahomes i think the only person that's taking josh allen down is probably a silverback gorilla yeah that's i mean that's a easy seven sacks a game i'm sure hey matt jake marsh part of my take podcast congratulations on the win this week but what's the longest you have gone without having to hear about 28 to 3 oh (laughs) <laughs> uh i'll give like the in-season answer it's it's once a week because it's every stadium i go into some unoriginal clown comes up and and goes with the 28 to 3 line so mm-hmm. it's every week every week in uh in season but during the off season uh it just depends if i'm, I'm back in new england or not if uh, if i'm up in new england where i went to school where my wife's from uh then we'll hear plenty about it but and now you have to reset the counter because Jake just brought it up. So today, correct. Yeah, so twice not. this week. Yeah. Uh, Swag, big fan. How many quarterbacks in the NFL right now do you think that you could start over? 50%. Ooh. I, I was going to say higher, but that you're a modest guy. What's up, Kenny? Uh, quick question. What happens when you throw a football without a glove on? Oh, you know, I do that in the walkthrough, and everybody on the offense is just amazed at, at how I'm <laughs> able to do it. So – it, it's not too different, but I, I manage during the walkthroughs without the gloves. Quick break from the best of. Brought to you by our friends at Pardon My Cheesesteak. Pardon My Cheesesteak is a del- delivery, excuse me, and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. Pardon My Cheesesteak is now available in hundreds of select locations nas- nationwide, with new locations being added every week. Pardon My Cheesesteak's menu features six inch and 12 inch classic cheesesteaks. Chipotle cheesesteaks or buffalo chicken cheesesteaks plus loaded fries and dessert brownie bites. Get lunch, dinner, or late night delivery, and we're open seven days a week. Go to PardonMyCheesesteak.com to learn more and order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. PardonMyCheesesteak.com. Learn more now and order. Open seven days a week and late night. Okay, back to the best of.
And my cool throne is Jack Nicklaus, who rejected. Wait, 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 what? No. 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 This is what? over. This podcast is done. No. Jake is going to have no. a stroke. Hold on. Hold on. No one tell him. Jack hey. Nicholas. Okay. Jack was no. Nicklaus. No. How did you say that? Jack Nick Nicholas. He said it like. like like it took me like two seconds to realize that's who he was talking about. Yeah. That's why my reaction was delayed. Oh on my what, god! On what planet did you, Jack Nicklaus? Where are you? Where are you? Where did we find you, Billy? <laughs> uh, rejected a hundred million, hundred million dollars. Through Billy, stay uh, strong. To not go to the <laughs> Saudi Gulf League. Shocking. Oh. Uh, yeah, he rejected all that money because of his morals. So. Cool thrown him. Wait, wait, J Jack Nicklaus? <laughs> wait, Jack Nicklaus was offered millions, a hundred million dollars to golf. He's and he's Saudi like ninety. I know, no, to be the commissioner. Or something oh, of the okay, league. okay. Right. Yeah, so he he didn't pull a. All right, good for Jack Nicklaus. <laughs> so it's fucking spelt. <laughs> no, I'm with you, Billy. But that <laughs> he's like, like one of. The why most does he just spell his name <laughs> Nicholas? <laughs> Why is it well, Nick Laus? Because his grandfather's well, like, <laughs> grandfather, grandfather. That's how he spelled if his you name. You saw a picture of for not anglicizing his name. Him, would you? <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> if you saw that, a picture of him, would I'm you not recognize him? Make Billy? your name more American. <laughs> that's that's probably the first time. In, no, it's definitely the first time in his life that Jack Nicholas has experienced <laughs> racism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why it's fine to say that. <laughs> Holy shit, Jack Nicklaus. <laughs> What you are you are a special I, I love person, you, Billy. Yeah, no, you're a special I love guy. You. You're Don't a special ever change. Guy. Don't read another book ever. That, a sh that makes like Hanks, like Objin <laughs> and Thailand. That's that's Post up mostly. there. You're, you, that, we we should do a Mount Rushmore I think it's, pronunciation. I, I think, I think Thailand th is is equally as bad because it's like you should recognize the name the, the same way when you see Jack Nicholas, like you know. But the thing is, I've only his last read his. Nicholas. I've only read his name. Yeah, but. Objin is maybe even better because you're also like not understanding a vagina. That one, well, yeah, but who knows what an object like? Who knows what that is? Who knows what that is? Yeah, a lot of people. Why would, people. Yeah, but like probably because your significant other is like, I have to go. Like I was, I was single at the time. <laughs> Jack Nicklaus, unbelievable. Print the shirts. <laughs> Jack Nicklaus. I've, it's like, also all capital but, letters. Is like when was the last time he like played? But he gets talked. You've heard his name yeah, said. Billy, he, he tees off at Augusta. I'm pretty sure he's like the first person that hits every single year. Right. And they say to, to kick off this year's Masters tournament, here he is, Jack Nicklaus. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what? Like, when did he stop playing? A long time ago. Yeah. I think yeah. he How stopped playing at the Masters in like, like the late 90s, probably. Yeah. I was born in the late 90s. That's true. But he's still like. I think he has the all-time record for major tournaments. He's the guy that Tiger I, I don't he's, golf. That's how you should know his name yes. because for the last 20 years, everyone's been like, when is Tiger going to get Jack Nicklaus's record? Yeah. <laughs> Jack Nicklaus no, is the GOAT. Jack Nicklaus sounds better than Jack Nicklaus. He's 82 Nicholas. years old. Jack Nicklaus sounds like every other dude. He's 82 years old, Jack Nicklaus. It, it is confusing when you got like Jack Nicklaus and you got Phil Mickelson. You want to call him Jack Nicholson? Yeah. Yeah. I almost thought this article was about Phil Mickelson. I thought he turned down the money, but it turns out he didn't. No, Phil did. I, no, no, Phil you know did. What? He's still trying. He's still taking the bait. That's he why I'm putting. He Jack should Schefter this like like when Tom Brady was was uh, suspended. And it was Dom Grady that was starting for the Patriots. Jack yeah. Nicklaus should take the hundred million. Yeah, and Jack Nicklaus should say no. <laughs> that would be smart for him. Jack Nicklaus. Unbelievable. What a moment. So just to just to recap for everyone, Billy wants us to send him to Nashville to party with tight end you. And we basically were like, if you are on good behavior leading up to it, yeah, we could think about this. This might be fun. And then uh for some reason last night he got so drunk that he didn't show up to work. That doesn't feel yeah. like well, doing enough to get sent to tight end you. So yeah, great the floor right is he's Billy's for all the lies he's that he's about to right give now. us. Look, dude, it was uh, entourage. <laughs> it was sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was not entourage you, was filmed. You want to unpack that? Yeah. What, what was entourage? Guy back at film festival, YOLO. I mean, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did. I, I'm here to take my lashings. Did what I did, you know. But it was uh, it was cool. What, was did awesome. you, what did you do specifically? <laughs> yeah, you did Entourage. That's as far as I know. You were in Entourage last night. You were cosplaying Entourage. It was awesome. So who did you go out with? Uh, literally 
all the best lacrosse players from my childhood. Okay, any, anybody else that works on this show? Was anybody anyone in else particular? There? Uh, Jake went home. Okay. Oh, so no, so Jake went out with you though, right? And then he went home. And then he went home, uh, and then he came no, into work. No, no, Jake. Jake went home. Very we were early. at the after party till one in the morning. Oh, you were there, Jake, yeah. till one yeah. in the morning. I left okay, that so one. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a reasonable thing. So this is also uh, these are my favorite moments too because Billy thinks that the history of Barstool started when he showed up, and he'll sometimes be like, uh, "Big Cat, you don't understand how hard I have it. Like you don't understand. Like this is like no, difficult." No, no, I, I, so, I literally. So, no, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I remember vividly. Um, if I could just share a story. When the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup, I think in 2013, um, I was lucky enough to go out with the team. I was out till, I want to say, 4 or 5 in the morning because I remember, I vividly remember hearing the birds chirp when I got home. And then I wrote, like, 14 blogs the next day because I know if I didn't, Dave would have, like, reamed my ass out and made a fool of me. Um, And so that just kind of shows you the easiness that you have because really – the only punishment you're getting is we're just doing this five minute segment where we're like, dude, you couldn't come to work. Uh, on a Thursday, on a Thursday at well, noon, it was 2 p.m. I thought we were doing it 2 p.m. I no, like, yeah. never said that. Wait, wait, we when you said, said what it, time do you usually come it was to work? 2 p.m. Yeah. What are you talking about? What was 2 p.m.? I mean, OK, I have no excuses. There it is. Okay. Hey. You're not getting the emoji there back. There we go. The emoji's already I gone. I don't want to take all the emojis. Billy, I, let me ask you an honest question. I am sorry. Do, I am sorry. Do you think that you are at a place in your life where you can handle the freedom of going to Nashville next weekend? Be honest. Uh, Yes. Oh, come <laughs> on. You should have said no there. I would have given you an emoji for honesty if you said no. I, no, I cannot. I, because... The thing is, the past couple of days have been entertaining a lot of clients and wait, what? Uh, <laughs> wait, what are you in what? sales now? What the You're fuck? Yeah. Out to, <laughs> entertaining what? It's clients? Who's a client? Name list the clients, because there was an S on that. I would love to hear it. one client. Uh game time? Is it, oh Arian. Arian's a client. Wait, yeah. wait, game time. No, it, because they give you a free ticket doesn't mean that you're entertaining. Yeah, they're that's actually not how that works. They're actually entertaining uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think you were with that. You just went to a game. Like I don't think you were with. No, he no, he wasn't. He went to a game. A so that was entertaining game time. It's basically <laughs> like when you Billy thinks that when he drinks fifteen Coors Light on Friday night, he's like, "Well, I'm entertaining Coors Light I'm as a client." A, yeah, I'm, a, I'm at a big uh, ad partner dinner tonight. <laughs> like, Billy, you're literally sitting and drinking beers on your couch. I'm um, doing work, guys. It's content. <laughs> it's fine. I'm actually not mad. Um, I'm just more it is like I said I'm happy that it happened so that it can be an illustration to our audience who sometimes thinks PFT and Hank and I are too hard on you it's like actually we're very easy on you when it all comes down to it because I'm not you're not in trouble it's just um, it's just very funny that you couldn't show up to work no, the news. thing is like I like it, this is like I took a shower oh, like, great oh, okay. awesome now we're, yeah progress like, I got up I got up like at 10 30 11 like being like okay <laughs> shower Get wow. like going to work, and then it was like, Oh shit, we're recording at 12. And I was like, Fuck, okay. So you got up and everything, and you even took a shower before you were even supposed to be at work. So technically, you were early. Okay. I'm sure there's plenty of AWLs also, who can relate to waking up for work at 10 30, yeah, and 11. Um, yeah, and they're like, This is no, this is cool. Also, also, just want to throw that out there that PFT, you know, usually how this podcast works, um, as much as we think we you, people think we don't have our shit together, we'll share on the ch- text chain, like, Hey, what's the schedule tomorrow? Let's just fill each other in. Mm-hmm. PFT at 5 42 p.m. last night, so that's that's fairly early, that's not like late breaking news. Texted the group, so noon tomorrow for Firefest for Stappen Perez at 3. Started the show via Zoom after the game. I pretty and much laid it all out teaser. Yep. Nice little teaser. There yeah, that is. That. Yeah. yeah, that is. But that was all laid out, and everyone was like, yep, that's perfect. Let's do it. Um, minus Billy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Being a big L. Billy. This is the full send Billy. So scared. I'm so, I'm so excited. This, look. You guys are going to hear it, and you're going to be like, whoa, but... Will we know what it is? Yes. Okay. That's a good start. Corn. Oh, God. Corn is a fruit. Can you guys veto that? 
I, no, is I, it? I'll let Billy say whatever he no, wants to say. No, that's what, that's going on the graphic. Is, is it? I think it's a. Is corn, it not a vegetable? Corn it, is a fruit. It's, is it legume? A vegetable? It, if you look it up, corn is a fruit. It has fruit qualities. Wait, that doesn't mean it's a fruit. <laughs> no, it has qualities the, it's, it's of a fruit. fruit. It's fruit curious. Yeah. No, no, it has so the kernels, the corn, are fruit. Isn't it a grain? Why the first no, question? It's, it's got to be a grain. So the first question on on Google is, why is corn not a fruit? An ear of corn is not technically a fruit. Instead, each kernel is a fruit. Exactly. But that's not. So you're taking one kernel, <laughs> one single kernel <laughs> yeah. of corn. It's no, like no, a single no, hornet. No, no, yeah, no, you no, are you're taking for, one single for for plant. plant. Oh, so yeah. are you no. taking one strawberry? One yeah, that's, that's, part of the yes, strawberry. Yeah, that's, no, yeah, we're, no, we're taking a, a strawberry. No, if you had a taste test. Remember, remember, you're taking a. But you only eat. Kernels of corn. No, 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 no. Eat corn. No, if we did, if we if we put this all and out in the kitchen it. and we said, here is everything. You get one cantaloupe. You get one blueberry. You get one strawberry. You get one nectarine, and you get one kernel of corn. There's kernels of corn that are bigger than one blueberry. Okay, that's fine. But you still like blueberry has a lot of taste in it. Corn does not. Have corn are, is very sweet. They're a great band with too. butter. I love corn. Corn. But I yeah, love it's fruit. I don't it's love, not a fruit. I don't, you can I don't eat multiple corn. Kernels. All right, so you guys vetoed it, so we're going with it. No, 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 no. He gets a no, no. single I, kernel of look, corn. I know you might be out there, and you might be like me, and not really like fruit, but love corn, and you're going to vote for Team Jilly because of corn. And there's some of you who might just love corn in general. <laughs> who are you talking to? I'm right talking now? to the corn lovers of America. <laughs> who are I was vote for yeah, us. Yeah, and Trent, us. Trent's bring, got your vote. Bring Team Jilly to our first W this season. Are you guys because of won? corn. <laughs> no, we have lost every time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but corn will bring us there. I love Trust in corn. Okay. So a single kernel of corn is going on the Mount Rush. No, no, corn. It's no. just corn. Yes. No, corn, corn is what I just say. You're scared of corn. No, no, no. You are scared of corn. Corn is actually a vegetable. That's what it says. And then a, a single kernel of corn well, is a like fruit. That's like saying the stalk of a strawberry is a vegetable. What? It's no. no. The no. part you, you said you get the strawberry. No, no, no. But when... No, the, the corn no. is a vegetable. No, the no. The kernel is, is a fruit. fruit. Corn Billy, is a fruit. Great pick. Corn. Great pick, Billy. You're, if, it's no, just I'm, gonna, I, I think it's a good pick. On I the graphic, four letters. C single o kernel of R N. K O backwards R N. Yeah. We'll do that. If too. you put corn the band on there, you might actually get more votes. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Corn. If everyone, if you ask someone, like, can you pick up some fruits at the, at the grocery store, you think anyone comes back with corn? Uh, in Billy's defense, sweet corn is really good. Corn, I know it is, corn. but it's, I you're scared of corn. Corn is one of my corn, favorite not, foods of all time. I'm not corn. Saying corn is not you good. Fruit. It's not no. fruit. No, I know. No, yeah. corn, corn. You're scared of corn on there because corn might win. I'm I'm shaking him. Bill Murray gift. Okay, why why did we have that big <laughs> knockdown drag out earlier about tomatoes? If you guys didn't even pick them, well, I was, and you were gonna I pick corn gonna, instead. Yeah. Hank, what's in that uh, bag? Let's take a look. We got a. Uh, well, why don't we end the show? Oh. Oh, it's a part of my cheesesteak. Oh. oh who's, wow. Who ordered part of my cheesesteak at this hour? They were just lying around the office. Oh, okay. Great. So, anyone. I anyone think. supposed to eat one? I think Billy lost a bet to White mm. Sox Dave tonight. Mm. Oh, you know oh. what, Hank? We got to get the hot sauce. Oh. Where is it? Yeah, I think it's out on the couch. Okay, let's go get oh, the hot sauce. Are we going to do it on the yeah, podcast? Yeah, let's have a bite. We'll just have a bite. Yeah, we'll just eat some. Let's have a bite. This is, it's fucking, so, this is have a fucking bite. whole night. As we wait for <laughs> Hank to get back. So, um, Billy and White Sox Dave had a contest, and Billy was on the side of the Commanders. White Sox Dave, obviously, think this will make good podcast, on the side of the Bears. And whichever we'll team it scored it first, whichever team scored first, the other guy had to eat a part of my cheesesteak with Sean Evans' Hot One Hot Sauce. That's got, uh, I think it's the 10 out of 10 spiciness. So Sean is actually, he's a friend of ours. And he said, because he's very excited to watch you eat this, Billy. He loves you. If if it's a good sandwich, then we could maybe do a secret menu with Sean Evans. Which would be, I mean, that's good business opportunity for you. So I hope that you're able to eat this. Mm. Could be in a lot of money, Billy. By the way, uh, I don't like the orange helmets. Maybe if they had won, I would like them. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Can we call a timeout here? Okay, timeout. Uh, okay, timeout. Okay, time out. Okay, time out. Twenty second. You get twenty second timeout. No, no, twenty no, second timeout. I'm taking a full. 
Okay, okay full. So, all right. What's you get a minute. You get a minute like, timeout. This was supposed to be for the stream. Yeah. This is a stream of sorts. So, this if White Sox a, Dave. YouTube, subscribe. If, if, if White Sox Dave would have lost, he wouldn't have had to do it. He would have went home. Oh, already. no, he would have done it. No, no. You Dude, guys. that guy does everything. He does no, he doesn't. No, he all right, doesn't. All right. I'm telling you right now, if we could go back in time and change it so that the commander scored first, I would make White Sox Dave do it. Billy, we got this in the third we quarter. We were just holding it for after. We would have done it to him on the stream. I know you're trying this to come is, up with what a spin are you talking zone. about? Show, show, show me show the receipt. Show, show, show me the receipt. Show me the receipt. Sh sh yeah, show yeah, motherfuckers. Seat. Billy, are yeah. you? Are you just? I ain't getting fucking punked on. Are you just? <laughs> <laughs> like you guys think I'm an idiot? I'm... Well, White Sox Dave did beat you in the Wonderlick. Yeah, ten seventeen. <laughs> okay, but still, wait, that is. Wait, that is the third quarter. Time Time. That's the third quarter. Ten thirty. Uh oh, that's oh. the third quarter. It's eleven forty-five right now. I hate getting punked by Billy all the time. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the hell is you know, this, Billy? Why can't you ever just do something without complaining about it? I do every fucking thing. <laughs> oh, like what the fuck? <laughs> okay, you don't have to eat the entire sandwich. It's just it like. Just Billy, give me. I, I just even, why? Did, how does putting tons of hot sauce <laughs> advertise for the fucking cheesesteak? Because I, <laughs> like I'm gonna not like it with all the hot sauce. I wasn't sauce, even part like, of putting this bet together, it's but stupid. because you it's because stupid. you belittled our franchises, now I want to see you do it. Just give me three bites. You don't have to eat the entire thing. Just three bites. <laughs> I'll take I'll, a bite, Billy. I'll take a bite too. Okay. How much hot sauce are we putting on it? Uh, will you calm down? I would down take for a bite, second? but I'm on a diet because Hank called me a fat fuck. <laughs> Like, cause I'm gonna You're be welcome. probably yeah, not be able to sleep you. tonight, cause I ate fucking hot sauce, oh, okay. and that's gonna be like fucking. It's just annoying. Now Billy's gonna be like, "You're giving me mental illness from having to <laughs> do this." Yes, eating the fucking hottest sauce ever. I just told you I'd take a bite. <laughs> Why can't you just do something? I'll smell I it. Do everything. <laughs> oh, I, I'm actually hungry too. Yeah, so worst. eat it. So eat it. I will eat it, but like how? Like, just take. Take three bites. Yeah. I'll, I'll take, take one bite. Okay. No, I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, but no, is there I'll a, take a bite. I'll take a bite. Am I supposed to put hot sauce I'll on it? Yes, okay. Billy. What are you talking? <laughs> don't. Of course no, you but are. there's no hot sauce okay, on it. Do you want me to eat it? Billy, there's but hot there's sauce no, right next. Are you? What are we doing? Are you here? being serious? What are we doing here? You see so how we, easy it is to take a bite? No, because there's no hot sauce on. That's not the I point. I was so easy. Take a bite. Billy, give me the hot sauce. All right, now put your hot sauce on. Give me the hot sauce. Sometimes I think you don't speak English. <laughs> you just took a bite, no hot sauce. Okay. I said I would take a bite. I didn't say anything about hot sauce. I will take a bite with hot sauce. My on. team lost. Okay. Boom. Oh, that's it. Here comes the bite, well, and he took the bite. Wait, when we originally talked about this, there was going to be dousing it in hot sauce. Mmm. 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 He feels good. That, that's really good. He looks good. He feels good. So that's how much I can put on? That's how much no, I can put on? Three put it bites. On. Just, yeah. uh, now, now do you feel I know, bad about I know I'm looking unreasonable, but this no, is... No, I, this no, is no, 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 no. Way under, have your this is way oversold. I just took a bite. Who sold anything? Mm hmm Nobody. Will you stop? Right. I'm not. You stop me. Billy, will you give stop me. talking and give me your sandwich? Because you're about to douse in hot sauce. <laughs> this is so stupid. I love, I love every why, second why of it. You, will you stop talking? <laughs> How, Billy, stop talking. <laughs> I don't want to hear you talk ever again. I, we thought Billy got over his fear of food and, and getting conquered by food in Colorado. <laughs> but You can't do it. There you go. Yeah, that's a little bit. See that? That was Billy, nothing. that's three bites worth. <laughs> PFT ate it. I did eat it. Fine. I'm actually going to take another bite with more hot sauce, okay? Oh, whoa. Okay, He's Billy? just doing this for sport now. He's this showing you up. stupid. Okay, I'm just putting more hot sauce on it and doing this because I'm a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. He's showing you up. All right. Oh, my God. How are be you careful, doing? Be careful, be careful, be careful. Stop talking. <laughs> this is your Stop idea. Stop talking. <laughs> yes, my idea is you to eat the sandwich, not talk to I'm me about hungry. eating the sandwich. Billy, be careful. <laughs> Watch, I'll take a bite. You're all you taking bet, bites. I'm loving it You're so all much. taking bites of sandwiches without hot sauce in it. Not Wait. me. I just ate three hey. bites in your face. Take a bite. 
Hank just took a bite. Wow. What a beast. With Hank's a beast. You know what? Took a bite. Just, you know what? Bad. Billy, I'm going to eat your half of the How sandwich. mad are you? Give How mad are you? Give me How mad are you? <laughs> I'm, you you literally volunteered me for something to put tons of hot sauce on it. Why are you so mad? Why give, are you so mad? Because I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it. I'm him. about to do it. Billy. I'm about to do it. You got your Give me your sandwich. I'm going to eat it because you won't shut the fuck up. All right, let's kick it to ourselves. Weekend preview because he's not going to eat it. So it doesn't matter. He's not going to eat it. Do a playoff baseball quickly. What? Playoff baseball quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, give us a little playoff baseball. Jake, give us a little playoff baseball. Division series. Yeah. Ron Alvarez, very good. Really good. Monster. Walk off in game one. Another one in game two. They're up two love. Monster. Uh, the Padres steal one in L.A. Yep. 1-1. One, one oh, yep. Out the, west. Oh, the oh goose, he's taking a bite. The he's goose landed on the field. Or even in uh, the Battle of the Anna East between Atlanta and Philadelphia. And the Yankees <laughs> got rained out. So by the time you're listening to this, it'll be game two in the afternoon. Yankees looking to go up to love over Cleveland. That's to love. All right. Thank hey, you, Jake. Hey, Billy, that was the wrong side of the sandwich. You just took yeah, a bite yeah. out of it. Yeah, fucking eating the bread. It's hot. <laughs> Okay, it's not we'll, that hot. We'll kick it to ourselves. Watch PMTV. You can watch the rest it's of this. not that fucking hot. Because I'm sure it will keep going on for a few minutes. Anything else from game four that we missed that we need to talk about? Uh, what, what, like, what does, uh, what do you need to see starting? I got a grammatical lesson. Oh, really? About oh, what? I hate that. I, uh, I tweeted, fucking A, man. Oh. Didn't use a comma, so yeah, Fuck I was like, I went, I went, I went back to my Twitter, like it was, it was, it was just a live tweet, like during a commercial or something. You just said fucking a man, and didn't even, didn't even look at it till after the game. And then I was looking, you know, it's like replies, twenty replies, Hank. thirty replies, and then fucking a man had like three hundred. That's perfect. You're such a good ally. Yeah. Hank. Love is love. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's Pride Month. I do think the Celtics plus three and a half is uh, a good bet on Monday night. Me too. Yeah, I like it. Might too. look stupid. So I mean, if the Celtics have never, they haven't lost this postseason following the loss. They haven't Correct. lost two straight. That would mean that they will win the championship. Right? Correct in seven. Well, numbers could, never lie. Fact won, or fiction. They have won two in a row, so they could win two in a row. Fact. They win in six. Yes. Yeah. And you are going to be sitting on the wood for Game Six, which actually makes Monday night like the most pressure-packed game of your life because you can then go and sit on the wood for possibly a championship. Yeah, and these which not, would be like you'd be in. You'd be in, like, the trophy presentation. Let's just not even talk about it. Right, Let's so just focus on tonight. Least... No, we'll focus on no, tonight. You mean, clearly, you've thought about it. You've thought about looking up and seeing confetti. You're going to get on the court. You're going to have a net draped around your neck. I'm I'm concerned with how much I've thought about it, yes. Do you think they'll give, let you give a speech? Maybe not. I mean, not like, not like your speech at Wisconsin, but... <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it publicly. I have thought about it. So I drove home today. I mean, say? I had a five-hour drive home today. You're right. So you were thinking, like, all right, what am I going to say here? Not to say, but man. just like, yeah, no, I'm not even going to talk about it. Go back to the fucking a man tweet. Did you capitalize the letter A? No. Oh, no. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> so you really were fucking a man. Yeah, according to my, that was my update. That was my yeah. Twitter update in like the third quarter or fourth quarter. It was probably after Steph, like kind of after Steph did something. It was after my um, first Steph woe. This might sound like I should know. I should know the answer to this question already. But what does fucking A mean? I'm looking it up right now. Is it is it just from... From uh, like British people being uh, like fucking hell. What is it? I just go. Uh, what? Did you type fucking oh, a man? No, <laughs> I put the comma in. Uh, come on, Billy. What does fucking a mean? It's okay. Where does it come from? Fucking a. Because I think important. British people would always be like fucking hell. Oh, it's U.S. slang, vulgar, an expression of triumph or joy, usually in response to an unexpected good news. Comes from the military saying affirmative. Which was said by soldiers in the heat of battle as fucking a per affirmative, ah. which was later shortened to fucking A. And which However, was later over the years, to fucking amen. the meaning <laughs> of this phrase has been changed. Is now used to express something as good. Okay. Yeah. Also, it's a double double negative. Yeah, I didn't even use it correctly. Twice. Yeah. I think you can also use it to be like, ah, oh, shit. It could yeah. just be like shit. I think that's like, what I was going for. Yeah, it can fucking be. A. Listen, language evolves over the years. Fucking a man. Fucking yeah. a man. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> did our did our bunker so get here, bombed? Yeah. Fucking affirmative. Yeah. I missed fucking it. A. I was fucking a man. <laughs> that kind of thing. I was sitting minding my own business at home on Monday night. I was actually putting my my kids to sleep, and I get a text message. And your father? Yeah, I'm a father oh. too. Uh, and I got it. bothered by you, Hank. Uh with this text message. Sorry to your one kid. That's two. Oh, Trolling me. My bad. 
Well, actually, it's three. Hank's Billy la- and you, too, because now I have to worry about what you're going to text to everyone. So four. This is Hank lashing out right oh, now. Oh, big time. This is about to get contentious. Out. I don't like oh, this. Oh, no. Yeah, Jake's <laughs> nervous. Uh, so there was a text message thread that Caleb, our, our, our great colleague Caleb, uh, started six years ago at the Super Bowl. It was me, Caleb, Dave, Gaz, and Hank. We were at the Super Bowl. I think it was probably after a late night of drinking. It was 3.23 in the morning. He texted everyone, uh, good night, fam. I texted one love because I love you guys. And uh, he named the group. Named the group fam. Damn. Flash No text messages on that group ch- chain for six years. Flash forward to last night, and Hank sends us a picture of uh, just a sweaty face staring deep into our souls. His sweaty face. And it says F45 day one check mark. And we're all like, huh? And I actually didn't even, I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is weird. And then I just kept on doing what I was doing. And then an hour later, Hank was like, whoops, I meant to send this to my family. And uh, since then, yeah, it's pretty much the worst people you could ever send a text message to, me, Dave, and Gaz. Um, the internet has memed you. And uh, I'm uncomfortable with you in the room. I, I submitted an HR complaint. Because you snitch unsolicited. That's a snitch. Uh, as, suit energy. Because you're my boss now. I'm not. And you work on the third floor. <laughs> you just, and the power you structure. Invent these things for your The power narrative. structure is so off that you send me. There a, is no power no, structure. You, you, you literally send, sit, nothing you, has Hank, changed. You yeah. sit on top of us. Yeah. You sent us. <laughs> you sent me a picture that made me feel uncomfortable. And then you tried to silence me by calling me a snitch. That's fucked up. I, it, it is a snitch did I say move the S that, word you, or that did, you do. Did I, so I, I did because you turned him into HR. You well, settled that on the streets. When, when when I turned him into HR, I actually just went upstairs. I was like, "Where's HR?" And they like just pointed in the corner. And I just said out loud, "I'd like to file a complaint against Hank," and then walked back downstairs. Hank does sit in the corner office upstairs. Too. No, I sit. I sit with HR, so I took the complaint and just fucking see. So this is the power sweater. structure. You control it. This yeah. is the power structure. This is corruption all the way down. So Hank. Um, I'm uncomfortable being around you, but I guess I have to power through. Credit to me. I feel like you should be supporting. I don't know. Like, again. Like, no, I don't want that picture. Caleb, I, I blame. I'd say 48% of the blame is on Caleb. <laughs> 48% of the blame is on Loud Sean for spiking my phone, which forced me to get a new one, which when I turned it on, all the messages like repopulated, but only from Saturday night. Like it was like that, that was the last time my cloud updated, which was no who cares. Like it was a day's worth of meaningless text messages. But this group text, the PMT group text, my friends from home and my family group text like didn't show up. And I was like, whatever, new new phone, new phone blues. I texted this group literally just to make sure like things were going through. Um, and then, yeah, I, I worked out again, new phone. So I, I was sweating and I didn't think the flash was on like i'm not used to my flash on my selfies it's being a on. shocking picture so i typed in fam because that's what my family group text is called and i don't know i'm again i wasn't f- factoring in this fucking super bowl crew from six years ago typed in Whoa, fam you say that like that's your fam it's not my fam was, yeah it is you know it's what not. that that fam was the first time i ever hung out with the company as a whole i remember yeah. that, you know what that was probably post second slices at the house of prime rib yeah house of prime rib and you that, that's your family or your fa- my my family, family. <laughs> and you just I mean I'm just I don't know I the, the best was that Hank texted me after on the either side, way I, I went he, I went back and texted yeah. and, and when I realized that it was those three I like pretty much he I got paralyzed he from said embarrassment. yeah he said Once I me, realized it was gas like it, it I said it earlier like if it was if it was maybe Caleb and Big Cat like you probably would have posted it, but maybe wouldn't have or like I could have it would have been 50 50 yeah gas probably definitely would have Dave probably wouldn't have just because he wouldn't have known what was going on, and like Caleb wouldn't have like. But the fact that it was all three of you just yeah, like piling each on, other on was just. And I knew it was. H- there was no shot. Hank at. sent me a text after he's like, "I haven't felt like this in a really long time," and it just made me so happy because it's like this guy he's been promoted to vice president of Barstool Sports. He's literally <laughs> our boss, executive vice, and president. he's still. And but it's nice because we can do like a throwback <laughs> 2014. Hank embarrasses himself. You just when you thought that the suit had gotten, you know, you'd graduated. I don't think it was anything to be embarrassed. I thought you looked good. You looked like you were in shape. Well, it's just such a weird picture. I'm I, scared. Like Listen. it wasn't like I, I wasn't think like when you take a selfie. Sometimes you take a picture, and I don't know. Again, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was doing. 
thought I was sending it to my flesh and blood. Yeah, so I that, was that, actually that, turning and sending it to literally. Would they like, have been that, as scared that, as I that was? That was my biggest no, question. Would have been out like, yes, thing, good is, job. Is how was like, it? Like, I, blah, blah, I understand blah. how it's. <laughs> Here's me playing paddle tennis. Like, I, I understand how it's embarrassing. This is my world score. It's like just it's family <laughs> shit. It's not like. I, and I don't I don't really drop in that much like it's I'm probably the least active you and never like, do it again yeah. they're kind of like you know why don't you ever update us and I'm like I don't really have much update I'm like oh I worked out like here we go dearly beloved we are gathered here today Saturday April 2nd 1120 p.m. in the city of New Orleans and coach Mike Krzyzewski is dead R.I.P. coach dead you had a hell of a run yeah. No, one, no one can take that away from you, but you're dead, so you're not listening to this right now. <laughs> I want to take the high road, if I could. Unlike Duke, who didn't shake hands. Unlike Coach K's grandson, who would take the drunk road. Yeah. Oh, he won an award, though. That wasn't rigged. So I want to take the high road for a brief second <laughs> and just say that tonight's basketball game was an incredible game. I, we, were, we were lucky to see it in person. Instant it was, classic. It was an all-time game. We're going to see it probably forever. Ever. I would actually imagine that this will be the most replayed game of Coach Mike Krzyzewski's career. It might bring back ESPN Classic as a, as a TV station just to play this. It was a great game. It was it was fantastic. Uh, it was you know it, it was two heavyweights. They're separated by less than ten miles. In North Carolina, Tobacco Road. Wait, but they've met before. They've never played in the NCAA tournament. It was so big cat. I don't know if you remember this, but a few weeks ago, Coach K's final night at Cameron Indoor Stadium, he played against UNC. Yep, I and, do remember. And they they slacked him. Yep, I do remember. That was bad. And then and then tonight, UNC beat Duke again. He screamed at the kids. He screamed at the kids. It was listen. It was, it was a great game to watch. Credit to UNC. They were all over the offensive boards all night long. They seemed to want it a little bit more. Coach K tried to work his magic with the refs. Didn't work. The better team tonight won. I think we can all say that, but we can oh, also yeah. say that. Oh yeah. Um we're gonna we're gonna miss we're gonna miss Coach K. He is he's dead, he's deceased, his legacy is tarnished forever. It can't get worse than what happened. Well and you're right, you're it's, right. It's over. It's it's Hard work pays off and dreams come true. Everyone who worked their ass off to make this possible, most notably the UNC basketball team, but everyone else who hates Duke and we gave them a voice, it happened. We The, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. I want to give you personally, Big Cat, a gold medal. Thank the, you. I the, appreciate in that. In the Hater I Olympics. I, I, I you, are, actually... you, you, are, you are the GOAT hater right now. Tonight is your night to celebrate. I also do think, though, that tonight is Roy Williams' night to celebrate for oh, yeah. walking away at the right time, naming a worthy successor instead of taking a year where he had to have everybody go around and deep throat his cock yep. and make love to him every single night. He did not do that. I, he, he picked a good coach to take over for him. And guess what? I actually think that tonight's victory over Duke is the final feather in the cap for Roy Williams being a better head coach in the state of North Carolina than Mike Krzyzewski was in the last 20 years. And it's the Roy Williams final because it's Kansas versus yep. UNC. So I had two thoughts, and we have Hank here. We're going to get to him in a second. I had two thoughts that are crazy thoughts, but both, like, I actually gave some, like, oh, this could happen. One was this morning when I woke up. I've been living in so much Duke and Coach K hate. It's been consuming me for basically the entire month. And I thought to myself, do you think if I started a serial type podcast and I did enough investigative journalism, I could make, I could get coach K in, in prison for life. And I was like, that could actually happen. And then my second thought was there's like a 2% chance that UNC puts a statue up of me in Chapel Hill. <laughs> I'm not going to rule it out. I, you know, I'm not going to be a total narcissist and say it's like definitely going to happen, but Let's just say if I got a phone call in the next year and they're like, hey, thank you for your service. Because, like, I, I did, like, six tours in the last week. Unlike handing, Coach K. <laughs> yes, unlike Coach K. Handing out – I was I was getting in a fight with a Duke fan on the way out. He was, he was going – he was going, act like you've been here. Show some class. And I was just doing the crying face to him. And I was like, ooh, your team lost. And it was – it was the uh, – Childish. Oh, hey, oh, wait, Hank. wait, oh, wait, hey, Hank. Hank, we'll get Hank. to you in a second. Hank – We'll get can to I you in a say, second. Can I, can I just say, 
my guy Henry Lockwood, and I've been with him for many, many years and many ups and downs. This guy, Hank, he knows ball because in the Dude, first half, <laughs> in the first half, he turned to me and he said, I love Caleb Love. He's awesome. Okay, can I, I I'm gonna say something nice about Hank. <laughs> you know ball. You know ball. Because I don't you know I ball. don't think Hank gets enough credit. If you go back, you look at the tape from twenty fifteen. It was Wisconsin Duke. Yeah. Hank kind of swallowed his Duke pride. Yeah. And he lost he, he It was a different de- time. He defeated you graciously. Yeah, it was in a different that moment. time. I just want to give Hank credit for doing that, for doing all the right things. But at the same time, I also do want to laugh in every Duke fan's face. There was there was this one Duke fan that was sitting the row in front of us tonight, uh, and he flipped out after the loss was over, and he tried to fight a UNC fan that was a row behind us. Mm-hmm. It was the saddest fight that I've <laughs> ever seen. He he like halfway punched the guy in the stomach, not even like a full punch, and then like halfway like kind of hit him like in the leg, and then got up in his face and was like, "I will fight you if you want to fight. I will fight you." <laughs> And he was trying to fight him, but he knew, because he's probably a lawyer, that he could not throw the first real punch that could be construed as battery. It was great to see the the Duke fans lose tonight. Although, I I do want to say, like, it was... It was an all-time game. Yeah, it really I mean, but was. That was let's, I mean, it was an all-time game. We can all agree with that. The sports are great, and it made it even better that Coach K went out in his legacies completely ruined, and Duke players didn't shake hands. And uh, This is what and, I'll remember about Coach yeah, K. Yeah, and yo, listen, everything he's done in his entire career has been wiped away. No, it's choke. There's nothing left. You, you want to talk about the all-time chokes? I think tonight was an all-time choke. Can I tell you K. something else that I might, I'm the thinking about doing? The guy was so fucking oh, scared. We'll get the to you. whole we'll get game. To you. Didn't say a the, word. The, it was quiet as a Can I tell you something else mouse. that I might do in a, in, a, mm. in a great plot twist if we're like going uh. season two of this? I might season two I, of what? I might root for I might root for John Shire to become a better coach than <laughs> Coach K. I might root for John Shire to have like I might root for him to have six titles and to beat UNC in the tournament and like everything to be like John Shire is ten in like never has moments like the Pete Godet never has like these terrible moments of Coach K just being a fucking asshole. It was just great. I, I think there's. Oh a- wait, sorry. Wait, hold on. Eternity. Oh, John Rusty just walked in. That was a capital E that he put on that. He put some stank on Eternity, too. Sorry, I, my phone was just playing videos. My bad. I think that there's a good chance, though, that... I, and I know what you're saying, Big Cat. That it, would, it would be nice to have Shire take over and take the program to like an elite level. <laughs> I want him to be really, really, <laughs> I, I, want, I want Duke and Duke fans to achieve the greatness that they deserve. And I think that John Shire is the guy that can get them to that point. But I also think that there's a good chance that if they falter off the stretch, you might not have seen the last of Coach K. He, yeah. might, he might come back. Well, Roy Williams might have to go to Duke and save the program. That would be nice. Um, so let's let's hear from Hank. I, let me just set the stage. Um, on the walkout, Hank was just – he kept on mumbling to himself, this couldn't be worse. This couldn't have gone worse. He would, like, literally – he would start wandering away from me, and I'd get back close to him, and I'd just hear him being like, that couldn't have gone worse. That couldn't have gone worse. And now we've been sitting here getting ready to record, and Hank gave me a look. Like, and I know you've seen this look, PFT, where he, like, he looked me dead in the eyes, and it was just like, I'm going to say some mean shit to you, like some shit that will, like, hurt your soul. He's going to start playing Cat's Cradle in my face again. But let's, don't do that. Yeah, you're going to do that. No, I mean, like, uh, you know, maybe you could take a lesson from Coach K, you know, the hair, the thing's getting gray. What is son getting A lot lot of pictures and videos. Oh, okay, all right. No, I'm not, I'm not just saying. I, right. I was reviewing right. some of the tape right. from tonight, and it's like, whoa. Uh, all right. B- Who's this silver fox? Yes, next I am. Game? By the way, uh, Unlike Coach K. we did have the conversation before this game. What would it be to my legacy if Coach K ended up winning the national championship? Good thing we don't have to answer that. My legacy has never been higher. People will. This will be the first line in my obituary. I killed Coach <laughs> K. I did. Yeah, uh, 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 vet, a war hero. I killed him. Uh, Pretty much war he's hero. Dead. Sometimes much war the hero. haters win. Yeah. So, yeah. No, like, no, this is, no, 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 no. But this, this is, is a like, rare time when the haters are the correct side yes, of history. Yes. This is like if Ross Perot yeah. was president. But this yeah. is like there's 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 losses that are bad, and then there's losses that the ripple effect. And it's like I trust me, I fucking know Big Cat. 
Oh yeah, he kept on saying that. He goes every they're gonna time. Have this, they're, he's gonna have this over my head forever. And then as he would say that, another UNC fan would come up and be like, "Can we get a picture?" And they'd be like, "We did it." And I'm like, "We did it." <laughs> so Hank, like, can, you know ball, dude. You said you're like my eyes are on Caleb Love. Caleb that guy's Love, really I bet good. I bet heavily on him against UCLA. Caleb Presley, one of our good friends, one of my good friends. I was texting him a lot about Caleb Love during the UCLA game. I was like, I love Love. I bet on I bet on him against Baylor. Love Love, great player. I was. You know, and and it was casual in the first half. We were like just talking, just going back and forth. I was like, Caleb Love, it was great player. My, I put it in the back of my head. I Fun was to like, watch. If He's I like, know, Hank is probably one of the smartest basketball minds I've ever been around. And he was like, watch out for Caleb Love. This guy's got big shot potential. There was about like. <laughs> well, he just doesn't. He has no. He doesn't give a fuck. That's no. what I respect about him. Is he doesn't. The moment wasn't too big for him because he doesn't care. He just wants to fucking shoot no matter what what the circumstances are. He made it. Mark Williams. There was some. There was some. No, oh, you know, nothing look at this. That, a Duke not, fan yeah, talking, talking about the refs. There was some questionable foul calls. <laughs> yes, Mark, there were. And, and there I will were say, I will say, calls. I will say, there was some questionable foul calls. But the real Against reason they UNC, lost was yeah. the Mark Williams shooting, missing those two free throws. Basically, turned the game where it was like they were going from a one possession game to like a four point game where it's like you got to play the that, foul game. You make those two free throws. Caleb Love, seventy five, seventy four. Different game. The ball's on him to hit that shot. And Baycott with playing on, like, half a leg. Oh, dude, the guy's... The guts I, on this guy. I'd be surprised well, if that he was ever walks again. If you ever right, right. walk again. Incredible. If you, if you have a fucking injury timeout where, like, they call a wheelchair and an ambulance on the court, you should have to stick out for more than five seconds because oh, he was back up. in the game. Hank, he, Hank, they called, Hank, they called the ambulance, up, and then he walked back in the game one up. minute later. Shut, Hank, shut up. Oh, yeah, what was your... What, what went, I mean, for people who don't know... There was just one of those stupid internet rumors that John Cena died from COVID. That's got to piss you off a little bit. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, honestly, if anything, it just, when someone, see, it's weird that you can take a piece of information like that and say stupid internet rumor. I wish, uh, I wish more people would have um, a perspective to cross check and fact check and dive deeper for truthful information because there's, so many things out there that might fall into the classification of stupid internet rumors, but when it's something as silly as as that that we know isn't true now because I'm speaking to you in real time on this show, uh, I think it's a nice exercise and to don't believe everything you read. Was there a small part of you that wanted to just kind of go along with it for a day just to get some of the tributes out there, just so you could see all the nice things people might say and then be like, uh, there a, small, a small part of me that wanted to end my existence. The answer to that is a resounding no. I <laughs> no. love the gift of life, and I'm I want to I want to have the gift as long as I possibly can. So no, no. not to end your existence, but to just kind of not say anything about the rumor being fake for a day. What and and where where is the good in that? I guess people a, would just be people like, would be like John oh, man, Cena. I love John yeah. Cena. He's such a great guy. Remember that time? I, people would share anecdotes. Like I would have tweeted. Remember that time John Cena wanted to fuck my belly button? Uh, man, I miss that guy. Uh, I know, I know you guys are trying to have some fun. I just, uh, I just lost a really close friend two days ago. Oh, and, uh, shit. no, no, that's cool. Uh, so Damn, when I say something sorry. like that and you take the smile off your face, uh, loss is a really tough thing. And I, trust me, I'll joke about a lot of stuff. Uh, especially if you watch Peacemaker, I'll joke about a ton of stuff. But, uh, if you're trying to get headline grabs, uh, I don't think, especially at this point, at any point, at any point, uh, the fragile nature of human life is, is a headline to grab. So I know what you're trying to do. Uh, I, I can't fault you for trying, but in taking a moment to reflect on the, the passing of a good close friend of mine, um, man, I just, I see things from a, a completely different perspective. I just don't think that's the, that's the right avenue for me to go down. Um, John Cena just fucking threw us through the ring there. <laughs> I tell you what, let's ask Rosillo all the questions that we get asked, Yeah, but we'll just redirect them towards him. Who's the best interview, interview you've ever had, Ryan? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's actually, I shared this on the podcast, but the Bill Russell interview that I did in the first year I was ever on the air was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Cause I was nervous as shit. I couldn't believe we, we only got him because we were promoting some other thing that his, his handler was doing. So it was rare. He never did anything. Right. And so really nervous. I'm doing a morning show with a couple other guys in their twenties. We, we barely have any hours under our belts doing this radio show. And somehow we end up with him in the interview, which was crazy to begin with. And as soon as the host introduced him, he stopped us and interrupted us. And we're like, fuck, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. this is going to suck. He's going to be like, who are these idiots? He's going to be Korean. And he goes, if you're going to introduce me, uh, instead of 
Hall of Famer, an 11 time champion. I would appreciate it if you introduced me and were like, oh no, as captain of the Boston Celtics. Ooh. And I was like, oh, uh, wait. hell yes. Yeah. So that one's always, because it was so early and it was a big deal. And I thought you were going to say Brandon Marshall. Well, <laughs> the, the other one. I'm probably most <laughs> proud of that Brandon Marshall interview. For those that don't know, we were pitched Brandon Marshall, the receiver. It was confirmed by everybody. We were good to go. Uh, I open up the Zoom and I'm like, that's not Brandon Marshall. And but it was. It, but it was. But it wasn't. <laughs> and I'm immediately like double checking an email and I'm going, what the fuck are you going to do right now? Who is this? And I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, all right, cool. And I'm like, I can't go in the Zoom chat, and I'm trying to, like, message Saruti being like – or Kyle. I think it was just Kyle at that point. And I was like, what? And so, it's the first question. You can go back. It's, we left it up because I was like, fuck it. I was like, what's up, man? What have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, ho hoping to find some sort of he's, he's... common ground with his answer of what he's been doing. Yeah, because I'm trying to, like, <laughs> why would I have a different Brandon Marshall that he would think – He's like, hey, I'm doing one of these sports podcasts tomorrow. Like, right. why does he think this is okay? Right. If this isn't like something's going on, and then I actually did remember, I'm like, oh, I think he's that Denver guy. I kind of like their yeah, he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, I like their linebackers that year. But I still, I mean, you guys know how this is. Like, if you let your head get fucked with in the process, you can make it way worse. Oh yeah. So now I'm like, you may think it's the Broncos linebacker, but now you're so screwed up because you can't believe that somebody confirmed this. And then as he was answering, I'm checking the email, and I was like, no, it's actually. The receivers confirmed on the email from the person. <laughs> so by the third question, I finally like piece it together. And, and then Kyle was like, what do you want to do with that interview? And I go, leave it up, and then we'll tell everybody what happened. Yeah, huh? it was, I was great. Actually, I was actually proud of myself. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation for the playoffs. Okay, you ready for this? I'm ready. You're down eight. It's fourth and goal from the eight. There's two minutes left, and you have all three timeouts. You're going to need a stop either way. Do you go for it or do you kick a field goal and make a two-possession game a two-possession game? I'll tell you what. You would go there, Big Cat. <laughs> what? That's a hypothetical. Yeah. I don't you – know? did that happen to you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean uh, – Here's another brain buster for you. Uh, three times three, less or more than eight. Excuse me? Three times more three, less or more, more than eight. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to kick three field goals in the last two minutes of the game. That's smart. <laughs> no, that was smart. Okay, now I got uh, it. Okay, Big Cat, I got you, man. I never Genius. come out of this show again. Never uh, have to get in the end zone when you kick three field goals. Okay, then the last one I had here, uh, hypothetically, fourth down at the eight-yard line. There's two minutes, nine seconds left. You're down eight. Mm. You kick a field goal there, just take the points. Yeah, just take the points. Just take the points. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. What was the line? Uh, I think it was three. three yeah, and it half. didn't help us. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, very upset about yeah, that. Yeah, you guys hit us in the points. Yeah. 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 I, I, so every time we talk to your coach Lafleur, um, we give him a hard time about that, and he's put all of it on you. He's like, Aaron wanted, to, you know, kick a field goal. He wanted to get off the field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He, he, like he didn't home. trust his arm. He was in that late. Situation. He was late for a flight to go hang right. out with Miles Teller in the jungle. Yeah. So yeah. it was. He wanted to get out of there. We're like, all right, fine. It's credit to him. He's never said it publicly. I think maybe he was thinking, if I get three now, then we stop him, get three again, get onside <laughs> kick, and then another three. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thirty-two to thirty-one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Champ championship. We ask every head coach that gets uh, their first head coaching job the same okay. question, mm -hmm. just to kind of like gauge where they're at, if they're an aggressive guy, if they're a conservative guy, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. So if it's uh, hypothetically like fourth quarter, fourth quarter, uh, mm -hmm. playoff game, playoff game, and you're down by eight, uh, eight points. Eight yeah, points. that's right, eight points, and you have the ball. On, on the eight, on the eight yard yeah, it's fourth line, and, eight. Yeah. And, it's and it's fourth, fourth and goal. Fourth and goal. Fourth and goal. From and what the happened eight. on two first and eight, left. second eight, and third and eight, and fourth and eight? Incompletions. Uh, you move the ball downfield though to Who's, the eight yard line. Who potentially could be the quarterback? One of the best quarterbacks. Uh, of all a guy time. who threw three interceptions today, hypothetically. One of the best quarterbacks of yeah. all time. Um, so do you do you kick a field goal and no. then you give you would give the other ball? Okay. You would give the ball away to the best quarterback okay. of all time. Yeah. Okay. So get to there. Golly, I'm glad I haven't been in that situation. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to have to make that decision. Because we were, we talked to Lafleur last week, and he was like, "That was all Hackett." Mm -hmm. So and he said that you're the one who said kick the field goal. We'll kick three field goals and we'll win this game. I'll let you know. I blacked out. I didn't even know what was happening. You know, I, I'm pretty sure I fainted <laughs> during that process. Mm -hmm. I, I freaked out and I had no clue what was going on. And uh, uh, it was, you know, I. Oh, are you talking about? 
the NFC no, championship no, 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 this game. Hypo, no, this hypothetically, hypothetically, hypothetically. Okay, hypothetically. I'm, I'm just trying to get this get yeah, this yeah. right in the yeah. head. Well, yeah, you know, I, I'd, I think I'd have to run it through the computers yeah. because I'm a nerd I, and yeah. I'd want to go through the statistics on everything and make sure that you made the appropriate decision. I can distill yeah. it down real quick. Okay, um, what's more, three or eight? Take your time. Your failed doctor. <laughs> eight points? Yeah, eight, eight points. points. You got it. Okay, right. so you're aggressive. Good. I yes. like that. Good. Smart guy. Smart. Good. Mm -hmm. Eight points is good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I hear that. Yeah. The Steelers, I mean, we're friends with Kenny and Mitch, so... Fuck well, the Steelers. Kenny and Mitch can suck my dick and balls. But they're they're right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're right yeah, in the middle yeah, in yeah, fuck yeah, game, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. Kenny and Mitch, I think, will just give you a solid, like, quality start. Six sure. innings, three earned runs. I think, yeah. I think it, you got to take them both at the same time. Yeah. So in this situation, mm. you have to be like, it's Kenny and Mitch double teaming. Kenny and Mitch double teaming. Okay. Yeah. Between them, they could satisfy one woman. I'll yeah. Yes. That. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I can see that. They tag okay. each other in. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I'm getting Mitch, tired. Mitch has the pussy wide open. He just throws it to the left. <laughs> <laughs> he puts his dick on her thigh. That hurts. That hurts. <laughs> I'm not going to laugh at that one. That hurts. <laughs> She's got her mouth open waiting for the cum shot. It just goes behind her. <laughs> I was open. I was open, Mitch. You could have hit me right in the tonsils. <laughs> it slipped out of my cock. What can I say? <laughs> oh. All right, so that's AFC North. I got one well. <laughs> um, Tua doesn't know how to fuck. So just they're, got, they're bottom of the barrel as far as I'm concerned. Tua just got married to his, I think, his college sweetheart. Oh. Oh, Which is weird, like this song. far outside of college. Like that just tells me that he's thinking, like, yeah, you know what, college was the best time that yeah. I ever had. Yeah. In my yeah. Oh no, yeah. you're so right. <laughs> Shit was awesome. Oh, back sell there. your fucking yeah. to a stock. Yeah. He's, he's like, like I, 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 want, I want to play the field of my. It's Miami. Yeah. yeah. Like he went to Miami, and then he's like, you know what, this girl I met in Alabama. Yeah. I think that's yeah. about as good as oh, it's gonna get. So right. Sick. Fuck wise, that's the yeah. fucking that's the nail in the coffin. Yeah. He's yeah. done. He'll be you're out right, of the league in two years. Yeah, because if he married her right after, it'd be like, oh, that makes sense. Of course. Yeah. To wait. Divorce coming. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Mike McDaniel's, he does seem to me like he would, he, like the he would basically just be sitting on a couch so high, and the girl would be like, "Hey, you want to do something?" He's like, "No, I'm watching Netflix right yeah, now." Like, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. next thing you know, he's falling asleep next to his bong, and you're like, "All right." right. He's like, I, "There's some interesting stuff going on about 9/11. I don't know if you've heard about." <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, "I'm going to bed. I yeah. I'm, I'm taking the, I'm taking out the vibrator. I'm going yeah, to bed." Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, also yeah. see him getting dommed out though. Like he's wearing a mask and just like chained up against a wall. Mm -hmm. He's just getting wit not ever fucking, but mm -hmm. just the guy that. Have you ever seen the, the videos of the dudes that just get like kneed in the balls repeatedly? Sure, sure. Yeah. That's sure. kind of like what I picture him just doing. Just get stepped on. I could, yeah. say, but I think he's more go with the flow though. You know, like you know, I could. I think there's other subs in the NFL. Okay. Like more, you know, more specific subs. Yeah. You know. Um. All right. AFC South. Uh, AFC South. I love Davis Mills. We're Davis Mills guys. Okay. Uh, his long ass neck. Long neck is a good sign. Yeah. A lot of you pussy get in dexterity. There. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 Trevor yeah, yeah. Lawrence, I don't think. I don't no, think there's finds. something's wrong. Yeah. Something's off there. Doug Peterson, he fucks with the visor on. Yes, yep. for sure. Yeah. And he's he's got, Doug Peterson is probably the top of my list for swingers. Yes. Like he definitely seems like absolutely leave the garage absolutely. door crack open, yeah, 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 come yeah, on yeah, in. Yeah, I got yeah. a hot tub. Yep, the yep, whole fucking yep. town. The whole you the like whole... my wife's. I saw you yeah. looking at my wife's tits. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Give him a squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a squeeze. The whole, the whole cul de sac is coming to Doug Peterson's <laughs> house to get sucked and fucked. <laughs> without question. Without question. He's got like seven different blenders in his <laughs> yeah. room. Yes. Make it like here's my. Yeah. This is the my tie room yes. right here. Yes. Yes. Go He's got themed fuck rooms for sure. Because it, it's that. those guys that, like, you see them at, like, the, whatever, like, the hedonism guys and the guys that go on these resorts where they're not in, like, great shape, but they were at one they point. They were, yeah. And you can kind of tell they got that confidence. Like, I want a Super Bowl. Yep. Like, I'll fuck all these chicks in front of my wife. 100%. And I'll have her get fucked, too. And, and then we'll with go With a home. smile on yeah, my face. Yeah, be happy, happily yeah. married. Yeah, 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 Four yeah, kids. Yeah, Who yeah. cares? <laughs> That's probably why he kept starting Nick Foles in yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah. He, was, yeah. <laughs> big, big he, he was like, this dude fucks. Yeah. 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 I gotta reward him. Yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah, he yeah. did to my wife. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His wife's picking up the kids from soccer practice with just full of Nick Foles juice. <laughs> 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 oh my God. We're never gonna get an interview with Matt after this. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then Matt Ryan, uh, uh, yeah, Matt Ryan is yeah, Matt, yeah, Ryan's Matt, Matt Ryan's Matt Ryan. Matt, you Matt know what? Ryan. Matt Ryan's like he's he's really good at missionary. Yeah. Yep, yep. Like yeah. he likes it. No, he's the guy. I, it was actually what you were talking about with Salah, where it's like he fucks his wife well. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what we'll say about Matt Ryan. Yeah, but mm -hmm. 
He sees another. He sees a color nipple that he's not familiar with. He'll freak out. Yeah, yeah. right. If his wife's nipples are hot pink and he sees a dark brown, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah he goes right. with WebMD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. <laughs> he's been doing the same thing for a long time. Yeah. He does it well. And he's solid at yeah. it. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. Next question. Blake Griffin, complete the lyric. Yes. Jealousy turning saints into the sea, swimming through sick lullabies. Choking on your alibis, but it's just the price. I and it's just the price I pay. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 calling me, turning yeah. right. my ear. Yes, oh, that it? yes, you nailed it. All right, Blake Bortles, Blake Bortles, your chance to respond. Complete this Drake lyric. You gotta be. <laughs> Nice for what to these? <laughs> that, he got like a whole verse, and I get three words. Complete the lyric, Blake. <laughs> okay, that one was a joke. That one was a joke. I won't make you say that one. Uh, we're tied two two still. No, no, it's three two. No, no, that Blake's whole thing was All just right, so a setup three, to get three. Blake. All right, so it's three three. Three yeah. three. Three it's three. Three three. I'm gonna give you know what? We're gonna give Blake Bortles credit for the correct answer. Yeah. Cause you could see he knew, yeah, but he, he knew. He, he knew. didn't want to act like he knew. Yeah, yeah, but you knew. Cause like is it racist? No, I don't know. Yeah. So um, three three. So we're gonna go to a tiebreaker here. Wow. Blake Bortles, name every team that Blake Griffin has played for in the NBA. Mm. Can I get a total? Yeah, give total. a total. Give yeah, a total. 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 Sure. Total. Three. Total. total number? Yeah. Yeah. Three, yeah, three. Three. Clippers? Yep. Nets? Yep. yep. <sighs> He's trying to forget this as well, so it's fine. <laughs> this was a one-year stint, the one I'm missing? Uh, it was yeah. like two. No, 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 multiple, multiple years. Yeah. Wait, do I answer these? Or... No, 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 no. All right, no, I know I don't answer them. <laughs> and, um... <sighs> you got it. Is there a time limit? No, he has literally forever. We did the ping pong balls last year, so. <laughs> Half under pace. Um, I'm struggling. I don't know. I'm going to guess and say the Suns. Mm. Good guess. What was so the you guess? give off Suns energy. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the Pistons. It's the Pistons. Thanks. Yeah. At, like, I'm sorry. I knew that. Yeah. Shit. Detroit Pistons. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Uh, no way. Though. I mean, Blake might be on the Suns. He might be part of that KD trade package yeah. that he wants. Yeah, that's true. You never that's know. True. I think we should give him a point for each one. So yeah. it's five to three Blake well, Bortles. Well, here's here's what we'll do because <laughs> because what I'll say is that Blake Bortles' career, he's played for twice as many teams as you have, Blake Griffin. So um, wow, we can really? just we can just reduce the fraction and say that you can tie Blake on this answer if you get four of the six teams. That Blake Bortles has played for. And if you get all of them, or five out of six, you're the winner. Five out of six, I win? Yeah. Okay, so we I've got the Jets. Five teams. Huh? What'd you say? I've only played teams. <laughs> He's only played for five teams? Oh, yeah, you played for one of them twice. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, so five Which teams. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> that was a all test right, so play. We got, we, got, we got Jacksonville. Yep. We got the LA Rams twice. Mm -hmm. Yep. We got the Green Bay Packers. This was right around the time we were doing Blake of the Year last year. Yep. And, well, I mean, PFT kind of gave this away. Saints. Yep. And I believe we had a stint in um, – I'll give you a hint. He gave no, everyone – yeah, No, no, it's a hint. He gave everyone COVID. <laughs> Denver. <laughs> Denver. Denver. <laughs> Can you elaborate on why Canadians prefer missionary while Americans gravitate towards doggy? Is Thanks. that true? Is that, yeah, I don't know. So I always heard it was I, the other way around so you can both watch hockey. Well, I, <laughs> I, I like missionary just because I like kissing. I like doing the French kissing while, <laughs> yeah. I'm, while I'm burying You're my... smoocher? Burying my 4 deep inside. Um, you smoocher? 
Is this uh, how I, the TNT show goes usually? No, we don't talk about. Well, yeah, sometimes you throw in a few dick jokes. I I like to to make out and kiss while I'm doing it. Yeah. So I I don't mind doggy. I just you know it's good. I I, I switch it around. You're a passionate man. Those are those are my two go tos. Like dog. The, the eye contact. Mm-hmm. You're like you're like uh, uh, Leo and Rose on the Titanic. Yeah. You just like to stare at uh, each yeah, other. Yeah, I'm making out and staring into their eyes and yeah. making sure that everything's good. Everything good? Yeah. <laughs> Does this work? You happy? Good. Are you yeah. happy? Can you feel anything down there? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me use my finger. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I, but who gave you that poll? I mean, it's, that might be a made-up thing. I mean, no, that seems. I'm, and you're I'm also stick with it in America. Like yeah. it's, it's been probably a decade since I haven't done it doggy style. Inside these borders, I usually like the doggy the second, style. If I get a passport, that means we're flipping over. I like the doggy style when you got your your foot on their face. You know, where you kind of go around. What? Just kinda... <laughs> it was All a right. fucking joke, big cat. I don't put my <laughs> feet on their face. Hey guys, got all, a summer never. beach question for you. <laughs> When is the time to train? I, hey, no, let's talk to Jake about about what he likes better. <laughs> are you a, are you here? Let's pass the mic Jake, over. Are you you, to, a, you went to college pretty close to Canada? Are Can you, you from mm-hmm. that? Jake, are you an anal guy? <laughs> I'm not. Have you ever <laughs> have you ever have you ever licked a girl's asshole? <laughs> have you ever not. sucked a fart out of a girl's ass? <laughs> no. Ever, you've never licked a cornhole. No. No, no leather Cheerios. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not a big Jake, an, I'm not a big anal guy. You either. know, Jake's a, Jake's a Panthers fan. You are. Well, yeah, it's my hometown team. I could have been better this season, but I'm going to be better these next few weeks. I wish. Oh, these, good. I'm glad. I, I wish these guys came class, better too. prepared. What did you make of the Kodak Black incident in the box that when was he was grinding right? his cock? And <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's an anal guy. Yeah, oh usually, yeah, like, those think? types of things happen at bad teams games, but the Panthers they're good. Well, it takes a while for them to like they're good. But you're not like they're a good franchise, yet. right? Good they, season, yeah, right. Like the Reds thing we talked about earlier. Yeah, they have to have mm-hmm. a few seasons in the consciousness to be like that's a good franchise. Uh, yeah, Jake, what if you like? What if you met the girl of your dreams, and she wanted to do a stand up sixty nine, but she was holding you, and you're like you were off the <laughs> ground. Would you be cool with that? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll answer for Jake. Yes, yes. Uh, good question though, Biz. Was Kodak <laughs> Black actually having sex with that girl? I never did. The I think he was getting an over the pant rub where. Yeah. Just so I had uh, grind. So uh, he was going super gremlin. So yeah. So when you're in the American Hockey League, you're not making that show dough. And we used to sometimes go to the strip clubs. I would not do this, but I would have teammates who would, they would go to the bathroom at the strip club. They would take their underwear off, put their dress pants back on, and then they would get lap dances because when you're getting that rub, they would be able to come just from doing <laughs> lap dances. So they would, they would, it's a, it's but then ho- they'd come like, out with. That's the funniest old hockey trick yeah. I've ever heard. And then they would go back. <laughs> They'd have and cum they, pants though. They would have cum in there, but they would go back and they would put their boxers on, and then they would they they you know they wouldn't be feeling the the wetness of the cum on their dress pants. Yeah, but then these the guys dress were pants. savages. Old hockey trick, total yeah. savages. Yeah. What, 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 one of which ended up. Uh, well, I guess we won't go there because yeah. we had to take it off the podcast because he got in a little bit of trouble. Uh, we said, for our birthdays, we'll buy more expensive gifts every year, and we'll until we get to a million dollars. And so That's then, unbelievable. So, but I'm like, I'm like looking at my time. Like Tom's 42, I'm 49. I gotta, I gotta speed this up. You know, it started with an e-bike. I got him an e-bike, <laughs> which is like it was what, three two, grand. Yeah, two like, grand. Yeah, three grand. And it was like, wow, this is awesome. And he was like, you give way better gifts than my wife. You know, he's like, my wife gave me a fucking wallet. <laughs> he's like, who the fuck wants? He got really upset about that. <laughs> and I think she got him like a nice wallet. He's like, what a shitty gift. Yeah. So we do gay birthdays. So we do. Uh, our, we, gay guys buy the best presents ever, right? So one year, Tom bought me like a three thousand dollar electric bike that goes forty miles an hour. Oh, those things are sick. They're awesome. Yes, and they're even they're better. motorcycles. They're even better at two a.m. when you're drunk and no one's out, right? Yeah. I got him this e-bike, and then he's like, "I'm gonna step it up. I'm gonna get you something that's more expensive, and then we'll top each other." And so it's been topping. It was like he got me a jet ski. So I buy him the next year. He had moved to Austin. I bought him a. Fifteen thousand dollar wave runner that goes seventy miles an hour, right? <laughs> so he's like, nice. So then this year, does he use it every fucking day? Oh, okay. Tom's a speed freak. <laughs> okay, so he gets on glass and just <clears throat> he uses it so much he bought a second one. I got him charter flights in and out of Austin. This year he calls me up. I'm stressed. We got the movie coming out, or we're, we're wrapping the movie. I'm doing screenings in like Sugarland, Los Angeles. I'm doing shows. I'm on tour. And I'm stressed out. Tom knows. And I'm doing two bears in Austin. 
And I, he knows I'm stressed out, and he calls me up. And he goes, happy birthday. Don't worry about next week. It was like my busiest week. And I go, what? And he goes, don't worry about it. I got you. After your show in Minneapolis, I got a private jet. It's going to pick you up. It's going to take you to Austin. We're going to do two two bears, and the private jet's going to take you to Sugarland, and it's going to drop you off to go to the screening of the movie. Then it's going to take you back to L.A. so you can see the girls and do your voiceover, and then the private jet is going to fly you back out on the road. And I was like, for real? He was like, yeah. And he goes, and it's not one of the tiny ones. It's the fucking G5. It's like the fucking big one. It's like $70,000. Yeah. And I'm like, all I thought was, motherfucker, I got to spend $100,000 on this guy next year. He got me a fucking <coughs> race car with a trailer. Right. Because you can't drive it on the street. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so now it's it's about, and that was a, that's a substantial purchase. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I said to him, he's really into cars and racing. And I said, let's start Two Bears Racing. I'll buy you a race car for your birthday. <laughs> and he's like, are you being serious? And I said, yeah. And he goes, no, you don't mess around with me. This is like my dream. And I was like, done. So I bought a $56,000 race car. Uh, we're doing endurance races, BMW endurance races. Hell yeah. So wh how are you going to step it up to him? I, I have something planned I cannot uh, give away. Now what's the expectation on your part for him to come back at you next year? What's the oh, what's baby. the ground floor for the price level? I'm, I mean, I'm assuming we're just going to double up. I, I'm thinking $200,000. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I kind of want like a, a, a ranch house in Montana. But I have I have a pretty substantial uh, gift idea. Yeah, so th this sounds like something that we do on this show a lot, which is we get really into things. Yeah. And our, our own like weird ideas and traditions and customs that we have here until it goes to a place too far and we all have to agree that we have to stop doing it entirely. I think we're we're about there with the gift giving. Well, I was gonna say, what year do you think one of you is going to the moon? Get get us the the dates for next year. I want we'll we'll build an entire grit week around it. We don't care. I love that. It's I mean. Oh yes. Yeah, we'll do it all. We want to do it all. So uh, it didn't work out this year, but yeah, we're in. We're in. So let's get ahead of it, and then we'll just block off the whole week. It'll be like fuck it. We're gonna come to Nashville and we're gonna get fucked up. Mm. Don't Billy, you can't listen to that part. Billy's not allowed to drink on the road. Not? No, never, but maybe never. for tight end you. I'm starting to think. One maybe. night. Yeah. I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna well, give it, him Light's a sponsor. Yeah. I'm gonna give him an emoji. I'm giving him an emoji. But he fucked up the man in question. Yeah, but I'm giving him an emoji just because he's down on himself for that, and that's showing okay. like he cares. Well, he, he's down on himself because he hey, he thinks that Billy, he's can you get in the camera? Able to get drunk. Yeah. Billy, can you stand in front of the Oh, there he is. Why doesn't if Billy, that's worth an emoji? He knows how to listen. Hey, why, if Billy could do two seventy five right right now, one time in front of you guys, he'll get an emoji. Done. Okay, okay. that's easy. All right, Billy. Easy, easy. He says that's easy. We'll end with let me, this. Hold on. Let me see his body. Let's see his Stand body in front of the camera. Show your body. He, he doesn't have see pockets on his pants. Take your shirt body. off. Take, take your yeah, shirt off. Can you take off. your shirt off for this? He wants to see your shirt. They want to see your body. Oh, can you take your shirt I off? I want to make. I want to make a bet, but I got to take a look at what he looks like. He's 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 done it before. But this is a little more pressure because you guys are watching. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Dan, will you tell him to take his shirt off? Take your shirt off. George wants you to take your shirt off. All right. Oh, they're, you're, they said they're, you're disinvited if you don't take the shirt off. What? Billy, take How your those, shirt off. How much weight they did you just, just put said on that. There? Time out. How much weight is on there? Uh, 275. What kind of. What kind of. Yeah, what are those weights? The, what are those no plates? Warm no warm up. Wait, are you really not going to take your shirt off? You're a rookie. Take your shirt 20, off. Yeah, wait, wait. They are saying that you're not invited if you don't take your shirt off. I'm. They take your shirt off. He's. George is saying he's got to take his shirt off. All right. Thank you. There it is. All right, look. This guy I'm, this I'm guy even starting. I'm showing you right now. I want. Hey, can you ask him why at 275 oh, 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 is there oh. 100 plates? <laughs> Knocking everything over. It's like a fucking. Chaos. Earthquake. Oh, oh, oh. I'm starting my notes app right oh, now. Shit, the Billy T E E U. Uh, what emoji are you gonna use? I. Th what do we yeah. use? I think maybe the just the arm, the strength. Three? Yeah, Two, arm. I think it's got to be the bicep. This is incredible. All right, Billy. wide grip. He's got a wide grip. Go, Billy! He got it. He got it. Way to go. No arm. Wow. Arm. The guy you did it. Okay, Billy gets a, you get an emoji. You just pop a peck. I'm giving him look. I just did gave him one Kyrie strength Cohen emoji. Moment? Look at that, Billy. I think you have to have 15 emojis on me and PFT's phone individually. So did 30 you just total. pop a peck? So you guys just <laughs> okay. No, we yeah. want you to earn it. Yeah, we want you to earn it. You know it. how much more you're going to enjoy this if you earn it? Big cat. Yeah. Big cat. Ask him if he just popped his peck. Did you just pop your peck? No, he's fine. He's crying about it. He's got like a little sore shoulder. This He'll happens be fine. every day. Yeah. He'll be fine. He's not Billy. He's like Big Ben. He just like he every every injury like oh this hurts. I don't like the way he's holding his shoulder. He's fine. 
Trust me, I've seen this a million times. That would be so funny if you got well, we talk, Why you guys have so many plates on for 275? What kind of plates are those? Uh, these are these are bumpers. 45, 25, 35, tens. That's the most ridiculous way to get the 275 I've ever heard. Yeah, we don't yeah, have enough 45s. That, that's all the weights that we have. Yeah, so. So we were doing max <laughs> Tuesdays, but then we ran out of weights. And so it's just kind of like, I guess we just max, I, I guess we benched all the weight in the world. Yeah. You can't get any Thank stronger. Thank God you don't have more. This guy's pec would shred off. Oh, he's hurt. He's, he's hurt. Fine. All right. He's fine. Oh, oh. I'm going to call it right now. He's hurt. <laughs> I can see it in his eyes. He's hurt, not he, injured. He's saying he had no warm up, so he's hurt. I, oh, no. I've seen guys get hurt before. He His face looks hurt. Yeah. No, he's, he's playing tough, but yeah, I think he's hurt. He's got resting hurt I think face. He's hurt. Yeah. I'm going to actually so give him, you know what? Because he's hurt, I'm going to give him the hospital emoji too. So he's got two uh, on my book. two. Good job, Billy. <laughs> so before you got into this room, we were actually having a discussion. We wanted to make you feel comfortable in the studio. Uh, you, you know, you're just starting to do podcasts. We want you to be cool. We want you to be yeah. yourself. Would you be more comfortable if we were all shirtless as well? Or would you like to be the only shirtless? The, the, the this room? is the greatest way I've ever started a podcast in the history of fucking podcasts. Not only would it make me more comfortable, but it makes you guys more primals, right? Because most people are born. It definitely primal. doesn't make me more comfortable. It makes you more primal though. I don't even think that's true either. It's I mean, true. It just makes me be like, all right, cool. Everyone's going to be like, Hey, look how fat this guy is. And I'm just like, all right. And I also like, you know, don't you want me to be me? Should I be me or should I be you? What you don't understand is you being primal is your truest, most authentic self. Before we started wearing primal listen, me has a shirt on. Li listen, before we started wearing shirts, right? Uh, uh, the truest expression of who we are, bare chested, uh -huh. is fucking. How, how were you born? With a shirt or without? Uh, I think I had a shirt on. Yeah. Probably. If, you, if you, the way that you were born, <laughs> is, is how you should rock it. For okay. The all times. I had a chain on. I was wearing a necklace. Yeah. When it came out. What about? All right. <laughs> so, badass. so I would assume the primal part, and, and Billy has a lot of questions. So the primal part. Well, off with the shirts. Who's taking the fuck? Yes, Billy this fucking so football. Annoying. All right. I'll do yes. It. Yeah, I'll take it off. I here I did go. think like just you walking in here with our shirts off yeah, was yeah, just fine. weird. We're making history. I mean, it's not history. We've taken our shirts off many times. No, this but... is the first podcast ever done shirtless by guys. All right. Uh, hey, so... I guarantee you that the viewership's going through the roof right now. Definitely <laughs> not. So um, the primal thing, is that no deodorant? Hell, no deodorant. Yeah, no, I know. I noticed the musk. The musk is strong. It's, it's a strong musk. Yeah, this is how a man is supposed to fucking smell. If everybody stopped wearing deodorant and perfumes, right, the new normal would be this fucking musk. Right, would be melted tar. Pheromones, so, right? So you're just you're talking about France. <laughs> like that's not yeah. I don't know if we want to be France. But yeah, okay. So no 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 deodorant Listen, stuff. I, I agree on the France thing, right? But like those people are detoxing, right? The way the fucking badass American lives. Right, you, you you go fucking chop wood. You go do hard fucking work, w multiple workouts a day. The way that we eat, the way that we sleep, the way that we our fucking attitude. There's a different smell to that. There's a different smell, and pheromones is exactly what I'm talking about. If everybody's we're living a life like this. Mm -hmm. You get a an attractive woman in here, right? She's you let gonna her, try to yeah. fuck us. You you you, you close. She's gonna close her eyes. She's gonna pick that fucking American. Yeah, because he smells like this. Yeah, I like that. actually, people will probably accuse you of paying us to come on this podcast. We, for the record, wanted you on. Um, but yeah, there's you like gave a, me whole... a whole handful of cash. Before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the there's cash. a whole industry of like people paying to to appear on other people's podcasts. Yeah, this is ridiculous. All, all these ridiculous accusations. People say I take PEDs. People say I have ab implants. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I, Let, I, can we be honest? Like you, you definitely take PEDs. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna be on for the. I, I, I'll be all right, honest. here we go. I take PEDs. Yeah. Uh -huh. I prioritize, execute, and oh, dominate every every you. every fucking morning. Every <laughs> morning. I, but, but let, I, let, I, let I me take finish PEDs. This. I pray every day. Yeah. <laughs> I love, so, so we both fucking take PEDs. There we go. The whole world should I take, take PEDs. PEDs. I'm on Winstrol. <laughs> this is, uh, don't know much a whole lot about that but but, but, but pe people say the same thing i got ab implants right or ab etching i got here you can get ab implants that's definitely what hanks I, I, hanks I don't know gotta about get that. <laughs> hanks gotta get his six pack in. i'll pay for hanks surgery our other producer who's not here right now because he's now a suit and he hates his life he's actually the true beta like when you say the nine to five guy who goes and hates his life, that's who you're talking about, Hank. Yeah. He's convinced he can get a six pack. I think I'm gonna pay for his ab implants. I'm looking at ab implants right now. They look <laughs> they look pretty good. I might have to get Wait, it. the third image result on ab implants is you. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I love it. I love it, right? Um and, and then after that it was hey, he has hair implants, right? Because let's uh, see it. Let's when, see the when, hair. Because when I first went on social media, 
I, I was always wearing a hat, right? Right. And then, and then sometimes I don't wear a hat, and people are like, hey, you know, you were bald because you're taking PEDs, and then you got hair. So all, the accusations will always come. I, I want to set the record straight. In 2018, I went to Singapore, and I got gene editing done. Right? Yeah. I, I modified uh, my, my myostatin gene. Right, and and this this is actually the truth. I was the first human to ever do it. It's always been wait uh, what? Wait wait, really wait are you serious? Rats. Um, th this is this is how these funny accusations. Oh wait, are you serious or no? I'm completely fucking. <laughs> okay, because okay. <laughs> what you did there is you made a joke, but we don't know what you're talking about except Billy. Like when you said that, I was like, what does that mean? And Billy was Gene super editing. excited. This is CRISPR, right? Like, yeah. And 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 so uh, again, the ancestral tenant right now is have a little fucking fun. Yeah. Right. Ta let let these accusations fly. You know what? You gave me a hundred k. I gave you 100k to yeah come on right show. you did you know and then hopefully you i'm actually... gonna pay for the ab implants for hank that's right when that's hank right. has a six pack it's like liver king did that the song um the the dunder mifflin the what people the people Persons, persons paper, paper people, people yeah. that is a jam that's yeah, like a, have you thought about taking paper. yeah can you sing it just real quick? stock this friendly faces around the block <laughs> break loose from them chains that are causing your pain Call Michael and Stanley, Jim DeWine and Cree. Call Andy and Kelly for your business paper needs. Call the, the, me, people, persons, paper, people. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, have you ever, like, considered just changing the words to it not being about a, a fictional paper company and just making it into a hit? I have not. I think it's good enough. Wow. It's I do so too. smooth, yeah. I'd agree well, with Why don't just keep it like it is, then? Yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, there, This is me trying to, like, like organize a, a whole like people want the office to reunite because they want to go back in time to feel the way that they felt about it at the same time they first watched it do, that's what i'm doing with that song right now i want to go back and listen to it again for the first time do you have your axe here uh i do have a guitar down here yeah oh is it is it acoustic or, or a acoustic go bust it out man you want, you want jam? there you go so <laughs> why not <laughs> what do you want to sing purple rain oh, oh you shit. went right to like expert mode there what do you want to do? Oh, one of the best songs from the best artist of all time. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Why not? Why Gotta not? put it on him there. Who would you say are your favorite artists of all time? Wow, man. That's deep. Um, Good deep. Michael question. Jackson. Man. Yeah? Michael Jackson. Prince. James Brown. Mm -hmm. Marvin Gaye. Uh, I mean, that's Sam, a good, Sam Kennison. That's a pretty good fucking list. <laughs> what what uh, are, you, are you searching how to play it? No, what key do you want to play it in? Let's go B flat. B flat. Okay. okay. Have you ever Two. played Purple Rain? I have a long time ago. Do you need the lyrics? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> Limit calls you in a sorrow. <laughs> I never meant to cause you any pain. Hey, I only wanted one time to see you laughing. I only wanna see you laughing in the purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. Uh. Purple rain, purple rain Purple rain, purple rain I only want to see you, baby In the purple rain That's beautiful. Yes! That's beautiful. I mean, that was off the top. That's fucking sick. That was, uh... Thanks, bro. Thanks. Nice, uh, nice skills there. I heard a little funk. Pattern. I mean, you, you you picked it in B flat, which is tough to do, and make it sound nice and open. Right, right. You know, couldn't play any yeah, open I, chords I, on there. It was a little fine. high for me too. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was fucking awesome. You that do have cool. a, a, a smooth voice. You have a gift. Yeah, I uh, appreciate it. Get it from my mom. Do you have something for our good uh, our good boy William football? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, I just, you know, I, I'm an AWL. We established that. And um, I just, I'd, I'd like to jot notes down about Billy throughout the year. And when I come on, I like to just, uh, 
Well, I just uh, wrote them down. Is Let's okay do it. I yes, them? I would love to hear it. Okay. <clears throat> this is a poem for Billy. <laughs> Billy, Billy, Billy. This is a ditty for the man who seems to have it all made. Billy, Billy, Billy. Even though he didn't grow hair on his pubis until the 11th grade. <laughs> Billy, Billy, Billy. We yearn for your knowledge and how wide it does span. Billy, Billy, Billy. Like Wednesday, when you referred to the country of Russia as one giant clam jam. <laughs> Billy, Billy, Billy. Yes, some of your takes are, shall we say, strange. But Billy, 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 at least unlike Hank, you seem to believe in climate change. <laughs> Billy, Billy, Billy. Sometimes when you speak, we all turn to our radios and we shout. Billy, Billy, Billy. Shh, we can't hear you. Your internet's going out. <laughs> Billy, 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 who are you exactly? We only have a few hints. Billy, Billy, Billy. We know you have a hedgehog and live with a man, Ben Mintz. <laughs> Billy, 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 as a man you are near perfect, nothing with you is broken. Billy, 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 but God, do we wish we had video of you getting dunked on in Hoboken. <laughs> Billy, 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 we all need your wisdom, so give him a raise for God's sake. But Billy, 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 we all know you're just going to get a coupon to pardon my cheesesteak. <laughs> Billy, 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 we love you, Billy. And we love you with this crew. And Billy, 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 never, ever lose that dog in you. This is a poem for Hank. Henry, 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 <laughs> to the man behind the men who seems to have no fear. Henry, 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 no matter what you do or say, the Patriots are strictly middle tier. Henry, 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 shout out to Coach Belichick, who, like you, is pretty tightly wound. Henry, 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 maybe he should stop hiring his children and running that franchise to the ground. Henry, 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 the Tom Giselle split must be hard for you to cover. Henry, 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 maybe they'd still be together if your boy was a more attentive Lover. Mm. Henry, 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 we love to hear your takes and your comebacks that are sick. Henry, <laughs> Henry, Henry, like motherfucker never smelt a football field, never did shit but eat a dick. <laughs> Henry, 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 we love your addition to the team and you always seem so stable. And Henry, 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 in no way did you ever, ever puke at a blackjack table <laughs> it didn't happen henry 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 always bringing wisdom and never sounding dumb henry 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 even if you can't pronounce the word interim <laughs> say it henry interim interim sorry interim interim i'm sorry interim <laughs> interim 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 yeah interim. There you go. Yeah. Very good. Henry, 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 you get to the point, you're concise, and you are always frank. And Henry, 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 for that, we will always be Team Hank. We love you, There Hank. you go. That was beautiful. We love you, DMC. <laughs> wow. And Jerry, you didn't say, any, you didn't say anything about him not getting the lottery ball machine. That's what I was waiting for. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was just going to be about that. Is, is it weird? Uh, now, you know, talking about Pulp Fiction, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Twins, all these movies that are classics, and now people probably just yell rum ham at you when you're walking oh, down yeah. the street. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Rum ham. Have you, yeah. Have you yeah, had a moment where you're like, oh, uh, yeah. well, this is what I'm at. This is what I am now. Yeah. I become. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's like right, kind of cool though. You know what I mean? Like with the whole the whole thing where you go, people uh, transfer. Like when Louis, when I did Taxi, I was, you know, the next day it was like every anywhere you went it was Louis. Hey Louis, hey Louis, Louis, and they'd play the song when I come in, and the whole thing, Louis, Louis, yeah. you know that whole thing. And then now with uh, with uh, it's always sunny. Uh, Frank has become like you know, it's a strong and 
the ham is. It's been classic. Big. Yeah. Oh yeah, people have tattoos of the ham. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's like really. It, great. Is that weird for you, Lucy? Like your your dad, you know, obviously all growing up, he's an actor, and then he gets this part that becomes like we're all, we're the same age, and like yeah. it's our age demo just loves this show and now loves your dad in I a know. totally different way. No, I mean, it's 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 awesome. I think it's really cool, you know, that he's able to, like, I don't know. I have friends who've seen... Uh, Sunny is one of those shows that, like, I've seen... I see it, I've seen... and But I don't know the episodes back and forwards like some people do. And I, you know, I love it that people, you know, know my dad in that way, you know? Yeah. I think it's really funny and, and awesome. And, you know, I think it's... I, I don't know. I think it's cool. It's a totally, yeah. like, different second act of your entire career. And it's, I mean, Always yeah. Sunny is... I think if you pull everyone in this office, it's a top five show for everyone. Here. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, we, yeah. We, we've done enough of them. Right. Well, we're going to do more, though. We're going <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. We're going to go in... Uh, you know, the guys are great to work with. Uh, you know, and they, they do a... They actually have a podcast, by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. That they've been doing. I haven't been on it yet. But the whole idea is that we're going to go back, I think, in January for season... Could Nine? it be 16? S- yeah, wow. something like that, man. But we have a good time doing it, and you just say, like, look... And I do almost anything. <laughs> Basically, you know, it's written that... We talk about it and everything. Like, do, am I going to come out of a couch naked, or am mm-hmm. I going to am I going to jump, fly, fall out a window, lose my mind? Uh-huh. Am I going to be slime? <laughs> and what's going to happen? Yeah. And I'm I'm game. You know, I, I did whitey tighties naked in that, or half half naked in a couple of shows where I was laying on the ground. Oh yeah, was that slime? N- I was slime. Night, was, nightworms. I was, I was washing. Was yeah, that the game you like play? That. I don't, oh oh, well, you mean um, uh, yeah, with Charlie? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Just crawl, you just crawl around on your stomach yeah, in the middle we, of the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I shit in the bed once. You pooped so. the bed. Yeah, pooped the bed. You know, it's the like, bed. Yeah, they're a little nuts, those guys. I think the, the great part about that show is that um, you can keep getting away with a lot of stuff. All the characters can do basically whatever they want because the unspoken joke that the audience is in on is that all these characters are, are detestable. Yeah, they're, and they're assholes. Bad, and they're yeah. all assholes. Yeah. They're all assholes. So you, you can say things on that show that you wouldn't be able to say if you were not operating under that premise. premise right. So I guess my question would be like, is has there ever been a moment where they tried to write something that was so out there oh, that absolutely. you're like, I don't I don't think we can make this funny. Well, no, they did one thing. We we try everything. You know, we try all kinds of stuff. But they did one thing. I was uh, I remember it was early morning, I was gonna go to work. I was about to go to a read through of the first uh script for that season. I can't remember which season. And Somebody handed me a script at the house and said, look, the the guys have changed their mind. They're going to do this script instead of the one you were going to read. And I said, oh, oh, God, OK. He's, they said, but they want you to read it right away. So and they're all in the office and I, they want to hear what you have to say because they're going to change up. And this is going to be the first show of the season. Mm-hmm. I said, cool. So I start reading it. And it's a show, normal show. They're in the bar. They're doing some prank. They're doing something. They're trying to get over on somebody, and they need a hooker. So they send me out to get a hooker. So I go in a car. I go to get a hooker. I get arrested immediately. Page four, I get arrested, right? I'm thrown in jail. I'm in a shower getting banged by some guy. Okay, wait a while. So, and I read, and then they go back to the bar, and they're doing some more antics and everything. They wrote an entire script where I get banged like six times <laughs> by white supremacists, <laughs> by cops, by everybody, until the very last moment, the cop, I'm de- Frank is like, you know, description of me laying on a yeah. cot. I can't, I'm depleted. You know, I've been banged by everybody. And and, and the, the cop says, somebody uh, made your bail. And I go, oh, thank God I get up, you know. And it says he's walking. He can't walk. He's been, and, and, and finally, the the cop, this big guy, says he's got a billy club in his hand. He says, "Well, Frank, you're not gonna leave before you say goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> and he throws me down on the ground, and all the cops come, oh. and they're, and in the last, very last moment of the script, the cop leans into me and says, "April Fool, motherfucker." <laughs> 
And I knew immediately <laughs> that it was April 1st and those sons of bitches <laughs> wrote a whole script just to bust my balls. That's amazing. Holy shit. I called them up. They were all sitting around oh with the speakerphone laughing their asses off. Oh. I was like an inch away from calling my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, like, it's a fucked up script, but I could actually see that working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an hilarious show. I, I mean, just, I'm sure it was a good script, yeah. right? Yeah, I visualized the whole thing. I was yeah. like, that's funny. He got yeah. to the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that, that year was big. 98 was huge. Yeah. We saved that team from being the L.A. Cardinals. I mean, yeah. they were LA, the L.A. Cardinals, if not for 98. Yeah, mm -hmm. go to the playoffs. So yeah. you the la the, that was your first time being a backup. The next time you were a backup was your last game, right? Mm -hmm. And I read the story. It's very funny. So um, it's a great story. Everyone should read it on Sports Illustrated. But Jake essentially tells a story that he's the backup. At first, he was upset that he was a backup. But then he realized, like, hey, why don't I enjoy this? Like, I'm going to go out and enjoy the fans eating hot dogs at halftime. So you get in the last game, and you were just like, fuck it. I'm just going to throw it deep and see what happens? Uh, no, not at all. I was, <laughs> I was rolling to my left and saw Javon Walker taking a break, going deep, and so I let it, let it go. I mean, I think it ball traveled 50-plus yards in the air. Right when it was coming down, he got tripped, and the guy came flying in and picked him off. So that was my last throw in the NFL, Yeah, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Yeah, yeah. right. Like <laughs> I came to the league to try to make a play, and that's what I told when I walked by Shanahan. He's looking at me like, what? And I'm like, trying to make a play, coach. Yep. <laughs> we sat down on the bench. And Matt, my coach, QB coach, Pat McPherson, comes over and he starts to pull something out. I was like, yeah, you could get, you could go ahead and get, get out of here. Get, get out of here. I'm not to talking to you anymore. I don't need to study. I don't need to tell you what I was doing. I mean, I was trying to make a play. Yeah, I wanted to win to the game. Play, Jesus Christ. Put Gunslinger. me in the game. We win that game. We go to the playoffs. I mean, yeah. it's just no offense to Jay either. It's just that was my team. You yeah. Know? And when I came back out, that energy was still there. You know? Yeah. And I felt it. And it felt good to kind of like my last curtain call was, a haymaker to make a roll play. to my left, yeah. trying to make a play. That's, he went out. I threw 161 TDs in the NFL, and I also threw 161 interceptions. Oh, that's wow. Awesome. That's, that is awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's the definition <laughs> of trying to make a play. I mean, <laughs> I came out even, man. I made a lot of good ones and some bad ones. You are the ultimate hands off the wheel guy. Like, that's so perfect that the universe ended your NFL career on that play yeah. with the same amount of touchdowns as interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny. There were about a good 10 of those, maybe, maybe a little more, were. Hail Mary's at the end of the first half with the Cardinals, too. Right, so right. keep in mind, I didn't throw it out of the end zone like a lot of QBs would for their rating. I was like, come on, let's get this TD. To make We're a play, throwing yeah. Hail Mary. I'm trying to make a play. Yes. I put it into the end zone, and there'd be a defensive guy who would pick it off. So at least 10 of those. Even yeah. Dave Brown, my backup, was like, dude, throw those out of bounds. I'm like... Are you kidding me, man? If we get a touchdown going in, we come out, we get another touchdown, we're only down by 14 now. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of 28, we got down by 14 like that. I mean, I never gave up till the yeah. clock was over. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's what my teammates loved is yeah. I think that I just never let them be complacent. Everybody loves you. You guys are fantastic. You're great for football. Thanks for having me on the show.